Hello, hello, hello! Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Gran Turismo World Series Showdown. Coming to you live from Amsterdam. Welcome one, welcome one. We are so happy that you're here to enjoy this moment with us. Today is the Manufacturer Series, so we have some of the best drivers in the world right here, ready to go to be your champion. And of course, we also have a nice new update, which is these guys right here, the audience. Thank you guys, let's hear it. We're so excited that you're here to join in with this. It's going to be an amazing day of racing. We're so happy you're here with us. Let's go check out the comp format and get it underway. Here's how it's going to break down today. You've got 12 manufacturer teams with three drivers in each one of them. Now, earlier today, we had a qualifying where basically each team would select one driver to do kind of their fastest lap. So we already now know position 7 to 12 on the grid for the final race. The top six, though, we're going to go into a qualifying race, which will determine the grid position for them in the grand final. So it's like a second chance to get a better position for that final long endurance race. In the grand final, all three drivers must race, and whoever crosses that line first is the winner. Let's kick it back to Tom and Jimmy. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Julia. Welcome along to Amsterdam for the GT World Series Showdown in 2023. My name is Tom Brooks. Alongside me, as ever, is the very blonde-looking Jimmy Broadbent. What on earth inspired that decision, first of all? I had to come back with a bang, right? You know, first live event since 2020, so I've got to make sure I celebrate it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done that, certainly. Uh, it is, of course, the GT World Series showdown here in Amsterdam. We're very much looking forward to seeing who is going to be crowned as the winner of the Manufacturers' Cup here tonight, which is going to be 12 teams all going head-to-head -head with one another. Before we get that one underway, though, we just want to say a very special mention to Angel Inestroza. Angel is a competitor for the GT World Series and was involved in a very nasty accident about a few weeks ago. He's recovering at home, thankfully, but he's going to take a little bit of time to, to mend and rest up. And we just wanted to extend our very best well wishes to him. And uh, we hope that he gets well soon and we see him back at a GT World Series event in the not too distant future. Anyway, before we get this one underway, we had qualifying that took place for the Manufacturers' Cup here earlier on today. Let's have a look at some highlights from this general qualifying session. So the 12 teams all went out. They were aiming for a top six position in quali. That's because the top six go through into the top six quali, which is a single lap attack coming up in a few moments' time. If you're seventh and down, that's where you qualify on the grid. Yeah, it was BMW set the early pace, uh, 156.9. Genesis said just about squeezing in mid-session, but were immediately deposed by Subaru outside, importantly, of that top six, not through the qualification there, because Indra looking uh, on uh, a little bit uh, worried there. Also, Valerio Gallo managed to get the car out of Honda into fifth position, which of course he was happy about, but that knocked out Nico Romero in the Genesis. Here's his reaction. Yeah, not a happy bunny. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Nico Romero there, of course, having to uh, line up in seventh place on the grid. Let's have a look. That's right, eighth place on the grid, I should say. Let's have a look at the overall qualifying results then. So Porsche, BMW, Mercedes, Nissan, Honda and Subaru will go head-to-head -head in the top six qualifier. Mazda will line up seventh on the grid ahead of Genesis, Lamborghini, Toyota, McLaren and Renault down in 12th place. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting, this. And you can see just how close the gap was there. Eight tenths of a second between the top 12 teams is a very small margin. Yeah, it's insane. Imagine that. That's basically getting one corner wrong and you're just out. You're not in the top six qualifier. But I've got to say, nice performance there by BMW. It feels like a little while since I've been back at the sharp end. Um, but uh, I think the race coming up isn't going to be as simple as just driving from flag to flag. <laughs> so hopefully they're prepared for that. No, I think you're quite right. Well, of course, GT7 is a game that's constantly evolving. It's here tonight for the GT World Series showdown. And we've actually got some campaigns live in GT7 at the moment. So take a look at this and see what's cracking. If you've opened up GT7 in the past couple of days, you'll see it's been updated for the GT World Series showdown in Amsterdam. To celebrate the release of the Gran Turismo movie this month, the Nissan GTR Nismo GT3 2018 is available as a gift until September 28th. Just click the special panel on the upper right of the world map screen to redeem in the same livery as the car in the movie. If you think you can predict who will be our 2023 Showdown Champions, click on the bonus campaign for your chance to win some serious credits. You can vote right up until the start of the grand final race of each event, so good luck. And if you click the viewers campaign panel to watch this weekend's stream, you'll receive an engine swap ticket for watching the Manufacturers Cup and early access to the amazing Toyota Japanese Ambulance if you watch the Nations Cup. 
And while you're in GT7, do keep practicing and, well, who knows, it could be you competing here next year. Yeah, that, that looks super cool. We love that, we love that. But we also just wanted to take a little moment to remind you of our Michelin driver of the day. Now, this is gonna happen after the grand final at the end. We're gonna put up our three nominated drivers. Then you're gonna have to pick your favorite. And then it's gonna be announced at the press conference after all the races are done. Speaking of Michelin though, we also have a little time trial competition that's gonna be going on as well, where you could win the chance to come and join us at the grand finals at the end of this year. Plus a whole load of other stuff too. So make sure you check out Gran Turismo online and keep updated because you could be sitting here in the audience with us next time, which is pretty sweet. And uh, now it's time to check out the top six qualifiers and get this kicked off and underway. Come on guys, let's go, I'm ready. Cannot wait for this one then. The drivers in their rigs ready to go for the uh, top six qualifiers. So these are the top six teams which uh, took part in the general qualifying session earlier on. It's a one lap attack though for this session. So basically they have one bite at the cherry to set their optimum lap time. It's at the Suzuka circuit, which is where the race is gonna take place here tonight as well. They've done practice here. They've done the general qualifying session, but top six with one shot at it, one mistake could cost you very dear. Yeah, definitely. And Suzuka is, as we all know, a very technical circuit. and. Uh, a lot of pressure here performing under the lights and of course of us uh, commentating in the background as well so uh, razor focus is going to be key for today and as our cars get out of circuit now for their outlaps yeah there is killian drumont subaru the reigning manufacturers cup champions of 2022 they won it in spectacular style uh, last year and we'll see whether they're going to be able to repeat that same feat they've got killian drumont at the helm as their attack driver in this top six qualifying session takuma miyazono roberto sternberg also making up that driver lineup just before we get the laps underway here jimmy talk us through this suzuka circuit what are the sort of nuances about it and what are the unique challenges of this track it's always been a driver's favorite favorite Suzuka. Uh, extremely technical. That first sector alone is uh, more technical than some circuits altogether. But it's all about momentum, keeping that speed. Medium speed cars do really well around here. Uh, and you'll find, of course, that there, there is some space for those cars that are quick in a straight line to make some time back, but not a lot. It's all about uh, being smooth and being progressive the throttle around here. And the Subaru, you think, would do fairly well around here, yet only uh, managed, I think it was P6 in the qualifying earlier on, which is, we, we've seen Subaru be very fast in the last couple of years. So uh, maybe not something Kalindra want is used to being towards the back of the field here. But anyway, on board with the Subaru. Now, to give you a driver's eye view of that first set to the S's, so all about being smooth and carrying speed through here. One turn in, one turn out. Using the curves there to help rotate the car somewhat as we come to the end of the S's now. And now into Dunlop, this long left-hander. Here we go through there. Don't touch that curve inside too much. You can sort of project it to the right hander there. And now uh, we go into the Degners. Two medium speed right handers. First one, you absolutely launch the car in. Second one, you've got to slow the car down a little bit more and try and get to that apex on the inside. Use the camera of the corner, then use the runoff on exit. And we come now to the end of that sector and into the hairpin. Now, this is a great overtaking spot in the race, but also a great uh, place to lose time in qualifying. Nice and neat and tidy there. Oh, a little bit sideways next to That'll be a couple of attempts lost there for Killian Drummond. Super easy to do that there, especially under this pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Coming through towards the middle sector, keep it to the right-hand side, then ease it over to the left before you end up in the spoon curve, a medium speed left-hander. Where do you put your braking point? Just about there, down into third gear, hug the inside of the corner, then you try and get as best exit as you possibly can on the run out onto this back straight. This, of course, is the famous section where you end up going towards 130R. It's also where you go over the circuit that you went under, going in towards that hairpin. Killian Drummond down this back straight we know the Subaru's Achilles heel has always been straight line speed and this is where they'll be losing a little bit of time relative to those around them but absolutely flat to the floor through 130R as he comes in towards the Casio triangle does he get the braking point right yes he does first gear then short shift up to second to get optimum traction through there relatively okay on the power a little bit of curb on the outside what is the lap time going to be it was a 56.9 was the fastest time this morning as Ramon comes to the line it's a 57.4 so that's not too bad but a couple of tenths of a second slower than he was earlier on here today yeah a bit messy in, at the end of the lap there uh, for Drummond just using a bit too much curb car getting out of shape here is Valerio Gallo at the moment uh, also 
out on a lap, of course, for Team Honda. It's been a Honda enthusiast for a long time, has Valera Gallon. Of course, we know how quick he is. So he's going to come to the uh, start-finish line now. We get an idea of what sort of time he can throw down in that NSX as he starts his flying lap. You know what? Fine. <laughs> I thought he was doing his flying lap already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Gallo is going to be able to do. This, of course, is Honda's backyard. It's their home circuit at Suzuka here. Oh, oh look at that. He was wide to the first corner. A little bit offline and then ran it to the outside of the kerb at turn one. That's already costly and it's only the start of the lap. And at this level as well, I mean, these guys are the, the best drivers in the world for Gran Turismo and uh, you have to think that that is going to be enough to already put them behind uh, Team Subaru and Killian Dumont's effort. But uh, we know that uh, Valero won't give up. Here is the first sector. How's it compared? See, two temps already lost to the, uh, the Subaru and probably go on board now uh, with the Honda driver. Again, a great view here as we come down towards the deck just once again. Let's see how he takes them compared to Dumont. Very aggressive on the first part there, using a little bit more of the, the road on the left-hand side, I noticed there, using all the circuit available to him. Now, I'd be interested to see what he's like through this hairpin, You're already losing a bit more time to Dremont. Four temps now is the gap. Bit of a wider line on the way in. Can he be nice on the exit? Yeah, nice line on exit there. In fact, actually, a little bit too wide. Maybe picked up some of the grass there, Tom. Yeah, just a little bit much, uh, too much curve there on the outside. Seems like it unsettled that Honda. And now heading in towards this middle sector of the lap is Valerio Gallo, of course, champion uh, of the Nations Cup here back in 2022, uh, 21. Sorry, I apologise. Yeah, because of course last year it was won by Coke Lopez in spectacular fashion. Through out of the spoon curve on the run down the back straight. Cool, calm, and collected for Valerio Gallo in terms of his face of concentration at the moment but is he going to be able to do anything to upset the apple cart and upset the time that Killian Drummond has set he's managed to close the deficit down it was half a second or so in sector two he's brought that down to just under two tenths as he heads towards the chicane he'll be frustrated though because he knows he's given away about half a second in lap time so far just in that first corner instant there so uh, a nice end of a lap for Valeria Gallo but not the best uh, overall he'll come across the start finish line is it enough to beat Subaru it's not for now so provisional P2 you can see there I, I think he knows I think he knows that was the best effort from him there. So now we go to Team uh, Nissan uh, with uh, Hafidi at the wheel. He's, he's been a Nissan driver for quite some time now. Actually, actually fairly decent behind the wheel of this GTR. And the GTR goes strong around here. So we'll see how it does uh, in this top six qualifier. Yeah, different driver lineup for this one. They've got Rota Cockerburn alongside him. And then the uh, Argentinian driver, who is Mateo Estevez, making his uh, first appearance at a GT World Series event for 20. 23. Let's see, though, what Hafidi is going to be able to do. Looks like he was okay through the first corner. That's where Gallo made his mistake on his flying lap last time around. Through these S-bends, it's so important to be smooth through here. Smooth applications of the throttle, smooth applications of the steering, and just trying to overdrive the car too much. When the pressure's on you, and we do talk about that a lot, it can prove to be very costly. He's within touching distance of Subaru in that first sector, just six hundredths of a second down, but definitely within a shout as it stands for now. A couple of stabs in the throttle there. You can see his telemetry in the bottom on right hand corner of your screens there is input see that is a couple of stabs to the front on each time there every time you're doing that you're moving the car to the outside of the corner and unsettling the weight transfer so three tenths down currently uh, on the super but we know the super is really fast in the first sector not so much in the last two sectors so let's see if everything can bring it back lots of uh, opposite lock there gets sideways on front we're just taking the front a bit too aggressively there this, this car's got a lot of torque so um, that would have cost him a little bit of time as well it's a, a bit clumsy so far this session a little bit, yeah. It seems like the pressure is really on these drivers. Of course, only one chance to set this flying lap and seems to be struggling a little bit there on the exit of that hairpin was Medi Hafidi. One of them, he's going to be able to try and turn his fortunes around as he comes out of the spoon curve and on this run uh, down the back straight. That engine singing away, accelerating up to about 160, 170 miles an hour before you go in towards the left-hander of 130R and he's dropped a bit of time there. He's two and a half tenths away, so I don't think it's going to be anything to upset Subaru. I wonder if he might be able to get in touching distance in this final sector to jump Honda and get himself up into a provisional second on the grid. Well, let's find out then the uh, last corner there for Team Nissan coming around the last uh, right-hander. What's it going to be? I don't think it's going to be quick enough to depose Subaru or Honda. It's a 57.5, so provisionally third there, pretty last for now, and uh, not looking too keen there with the result. But now we turn our attention to Team Mercedes-Benz AMG. Now, this 
is a stacked lineup. Both Wah, Benelli, and Yamanaka. Both Wah behind the wheel for qualifying. He's been a Mercedes AMG driver for a very long time here in the Manufacturers Cup. So uh, I mean, wouldn't be surprised to see a, a good time on the board from him. Let's see how his slower sector is. That's where we've seen a lot of people struggling so far outside of Drummond. Let's see if we can uh, keep it together through that. It seems to be the case as well that if you drop time in that first sector, you kind of carry that for the remainder of the lap. You're like, sort of, yeah, you see that couple of bites of the cherry actually at the first corner there. Just looks like he was struggling to get the car turned in whilst it was under load on the outside tyres. Yeah, really easy to do that through there. So a lot, a lot of load, as you say, on the outside tyres, so the car can slip away from you. But uh, it's nice and neat and tidy so far through this uh, section. Coming to the VSs once more again, on board with the, uh, the AMG. This car has been very, very successful and so much so it's actually quicker than the, uh, uh, the Subaru, sorry, through the uh, the first sector, which no one's done that so far. So uh, this could be a good lap here for Baptiste Beaufort. Through the Deckers again. Oh, wow, big chunk of kerb on the inside there, almost moving the car off the circuit on the left-hand side. You'd love to see that. Now it comes to the hairpin once again. Lost a little bit of time there, actually, through there. But again, we know that the uh, Subaru is quick through that sector. Now, the AMG, bit of grunt in the straight line this car, so we imagine we'll come back a little bit. And again, yeah, as you say, Tom, there, just uh, uh, playing the front a little bit. Yeah, you can see him there just trying to find traction and just get the optimum time to get the foot flat to the floor, essentially. That's what he was doing, sort of feathering the throttle, trying to feel for the grip underneath him as he comes through in towards the uh, spoon curve. It's looking nice and neat and tidy here for Baptiste Beauvoir. As you said, an absolutely stacked driver lineup for Mercedes-AMG here this weekend. They've been a little bit off form as of late. Let's see, though, whether they're going to be able to turn Turn their fortunes around and get them up to the top of the order. Down this back straight we go. The Frenchman looking nice and calm as he heads in towards 130R. Through very, there, very just 70, yeah, 17 thousandths of a second down. So this is looking good here for Baptiste Beauvoir. If he can have a good final couple of corners, this could be an upset and provisional pole position for Mercedes and for the Frenchman who's behind the wheel at the moment through the Casio triangle. A little bit wiggly on the exit. That's going to cost him time and he knows it. It's going to not surely be pole position here for Baptiste Beauvoir, but where does it put him? Ah, oh, look at the time he lost there. Three tenths of a second is all the time he lost, and he's down fourth and slowest of the four teams that have set time so far. Yeah, real shame there for Baptiste Beauvoir, but on the upside, the, the lowest he can finish is sixth. Now, Jose Serrano and Suzaki, of course, in the Porsche, missing Angel and Estroza, who we mentioned earlier, unfortunately, is recovering from absolute get well soon, mate, as we uh, go down towards C1 with the Porsche. Now, Porsche, another team, who've been very strong in the Manufacturers Cup. Um, so we always tend to expect a good result. Jose Serrano as well as a driver who has matured greatly. Always had amazing raw speed, but maybe a couple of uh, odd overtake choices in the past. But I think now that, you know, as time's gone on, you, you can sort of tune those out a little bit. And the car really on the edge, you can hear the tyres there fighting for grip as Jose really rested his Porsche through the S's. Yeah, he's looking OK, though, so far, it's Jose Serrano. The first second time will be the proof in the pudding here for the young Spaniard. And you said there are a couple of mistakes, and you're absolutely spot on about that. But uh, bear in mind, a lot of these drivers are young. They're making, some of them making their debuts here this weekend. And it's a huge thing to go from playing in your sitting room or your bedroom at home to coming here to one of these World Series events. A tenth of a second down for Serrano in the first sector, attacking those Degners. Not as much curb on the inside there and fighting the steering wheel a little bit on exit. And he's dropped a few more tenths down now as well. So just over three and a half tenths off of the quickest time. He's going to have the mother and father of all jobs to close that deficit down here to Subaru. Nice exit out of the hairpin will help his cause but you wonder whether it might be a little bit in vain because the thing is, three tenths of a second, we saw it's not a particularly massive gap, but Baptiste Beauvoir, that mistake he made up the final corner, cost Mercedes, I'm almost certain, a front row opportunity. Yeah, a reminder, of course, that these guys uh, in the pre-qualifying earlier managed P2, so the speed is definitely there in the car, whether the driver can extract it on the uh, one flying lap or not is, of course, uh, the question. Now we go down the back straight underneath uh, the gantries here coming up to 130. Yeah, watch his throttle input there on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Will he be flat through 130? Yeah, here we go. Almost same time as the Subaru. No, has to lift through there. Just gets back on the throttle, uses all the circuit there. So definitely have the max of what the car's capable of. See so the nose dive there as he slams the brake into the chicane on the left curb. And now, can he be nice and neat and tidy? He can be out of this. It's definitely better than Beauvoir through there. This might be a good time here for Houses. He hugs the wall for the shortest possible line and just only just by 18,000 slower 
than the Subaru, but provisionally a P2. Amazing stuff there for uh, the Porsche team and for Jose Serrano. Thomas Laboutile behind the wheel of the BMW. We've seen this car win before the World Tour event back in Paris in 2019. Long time ago that now, since we saw a BMW on the top step. It's a fairly old car. I think we first saw it back in, what was it, 2016? Something along the lines of that, Jimmy? Yeah, it's been around for a while, this BMW, but it doesn't mean it's not uh, capable of the job. We saw earlier on Thomas Laboutile, of course, uh, we're going to go on board with him for the start of his lap. The Frenchman, again, very experienced, usually a BW driver, so nice to see him uh, in a different manufacturer having success as well. And uh, as we said, all through this session, it's all about being nice and neat through this first section and just carrying the speed. Roll the speed, as a good friend of mine uh, used to say. So watching the throttle inputs down the bottom seems to be fairly easy with them. A couple of little lifts there as he tries to get the car turned. See the change in direction there, very violent into Dunlop, quite wide there, almost picked up some of the grass on the exit of uh, Dunlop, and now we go into the deck. We'll keep it on his sector time, but so far, not a bad start to the lap for Thomas Laboutile. Yeah, you see there going through the Degners, and not a bad line through there, but the proof will be when he comes across this line on the circuit and breaks the beam, two tenths of a second shy of Subaru's quickest time, which isn't too bad, but at the moment it could be second row, potentially, if he can hold that deficit to the chequered flag. That's the crucial question, because it's one thing being two tenths of a second down in the middle of the lap, but there's still half a lap to go, and an opportunity to either gain or indeed lose a bit of time. Definitely a lot of pressure there on the Frenchman's shoulders. Everyone else is gone. It's now up to you. All eyes on Team BMW and Thomas Laputa. Can they snatch pole position away from Team Subaru? We'll find out in about 30 seconds' time as we exit the spoon curve. Nice through there. Hard on the throttle now up towards 130R. And we'll see the time gap coming through this next sector. Will he be ahead or behind the Subaru? Let's see, he comes across, breaks the beam, and he's ahead for now. So Team BMW on a fantastic lap right now. Only a couple more corners to go. Can he carry that time to the line? Thomas de Boutelet then in towards the Casio Triangle. Tenth of a second up. That's the best time we've seen in the third sector overall. But there's just a couple of corners now remaining for the Frenchman and for BMW for pole position around the final corner to break the beam and come to the timing line. BMW go to pole! 157 flat for Thomas Le Boutelet and BMW. They knock Subaru off of the top step of the grid. Amazing lap there from Thomas Le Boutelet under pressure and the Frenchman managed to deliver. Not even by a little bit. Three tenths of a second. That might not sound like a big gap, but at this level, that is a massive statement from Team BMW there. That car in the dry, fantastically quick. So looking forward to seeing if they can keep that going for the race. Yeah, it's going to be hugely exciting to see what is going to happen then for that one. What a brilliant top six qualifying right to the end. That's exactly what we love to see. And, and Thomas just managing to, to pull the cat out of the bag when it matters. Yeah, really nice there for Team BMW. I've got to say, uh, a Baptiste Beauvoir, I expect a bit of a better result for him really you see I mean I don't think cracking under pressure just caught the curb in a bit of a weird way at the end of the lap the car starts moving around and you're forced to get off the throttle to save it and uh, that cost him a lot of time in the end but I think the surprise to me is Team Subaru uh, managing to get into P2 there they had a pretty poor pre-qualifying by their standards but Kylian Drummond we know how fast he is there and uh, P2 could, could result in. Yeah not bad at all let's have a look and see what happened here for Mercedes this is of course Baptiste Beauvoir behind the wheel it was all going so swimmingly and then Oh, what happened there, Jimmy? Talk us through. Just got on the throttle a bit too quickly. Car snapped, he corrected it, and when you when you correct it, you need more space. So went onto the inside there and lost a bit of time. But uh, even even so, only three tenths off. No! Yeah, and he knows it as well. Thankfully, he kept it relatively PC for us in the, in the commentary box <laughs> I, I and on the broadcast. I was waiting for something, some, some sort of F-bomb there or something, but uh, luckily it didn't come. So yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. But yeah, brilliant lap time there for uh, Thomas Laboutile and for BMW. Let's have a look at the qualifying results then for the top six. BMW take the spoils by over three tenths of a second from Team Subaru. That's an all uh, French front row in terms of the drivers who qualify. Whether they start that way, it remains to be seen. It's Porsche in third ahead of Honda and then Nissan, Mercedes AMG down there in sixth place courtesy of that uh, costly error there for Baptiste Beauvoir but still plenty of opportunities a long long race here coming up this evening as well so a good chance for drivers and teams to work out strategies change their fortune a little bit the thing is you say costly error it's only six tenths off, off pole it's insane how close these guys are here, but it just goes to show how tight the margins are yeah, absolutely right. Well, let's head down then to uh, Julia, shall we, before we get this one underway. Julia, before we get the uh, Manufacturer Series race to go, what have you got for us? Oh, look at that snow.
sneaky BMW just coming in and snaking it. No, brilliant stuff. What an amazing qualifier. That makes me super, super excited for the race. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard something about a little a movie about Gran Turismo. You heard anything about this? Maybe? You're, I mean, you should really know. You're the key demographic, for heaven's sake. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the movie is fantastic. We actually all went to the premiere last night to see it. And if you're a Gran Turismo fan, it is an absolute must-see. It's just brilliant. We loved it. So we thought we'd share a nice little, nice little video just for you guys watching at home in case you haven't seen it yet. In the game, you reset. You miss it on the track. You could die. Who do you think the best driver is? Probably Rory. I would dust him in a lap. Jan, all you do is play video games with some crazy dreams of racing cars. Dad, you're the one that told us to always do something we love. You know what racing cars cost? Look around. It's not our world, son. What is this? It's a contest. The best Gran Turismo players in the world get a chance to compete in professional racing. Dude, this is real. This is real. I'm sorry. You really think you're going to take a kid who plays video games in their bedroom, you're going to strap them to a 200 mile an hour rocket. It'll tear them to pieces. It's not gonna work. The guys who race are elite athletes. But I won't stop now. Your kids are scrawny little gamer kids. No, that's where you coming. Come on, let's go! Cause I can't stop now. Must be a new experience for you moving your legs. <laughs> you puked on my lawn. There's no turning back now. When you're in a race, the cockpit is gonna be 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The G-forces will be twice what an astronaut experiences upon liftoff. I can't see anything! Hey, you get extra points for that in the game? Jesus Christ. I had to hustle hard, never give up. This whole thing is insane, but out of the couch surfing nerds that you sent me, he is the best one. You made it. Yes! Welcome to Team Nissan. What's next? It's major leagues. The other drivers are going to hate you. Come on. Whoopsie. What is your problem? It's part of the game, it's called racing. But I won't stop now. If you miss a line in the game, you reset. You miss it on the track, you could die. You me now. You me. I, won't stop now. I know this track. Because I can't stop now. I've raced it a thousand times. That's what I'm talking about. Me now. But I won't stop now. The Gran Turismo movie out now. This was the premiere that we had last night here in Amptacular to see so many pe people, so many faces. Jan Mardenborough, the man who they, this epic film is based on as well was there. And so were we. Yeah, I know. My, my first premiere, I didn't know what to do, really. It was an awesome event, uh, such a great atmosphere there. And, of course, uh, we got to hear from uh, the, the man himself as well. So uh, amazing event. Zaki in third place. Then you've got Honda, Nissan. You've got Mercedes AMG down there in sixth place ahead of uh, Mazda. Then it is Genesis. Lamborghini, Toyota, McLaren, and Red 12 driver strong field. So it's going to be hugely interesting to see how this one is uh, going to work out, especially at this Suzuka circuit, which, as we know, is a very, very big challenge. And passing opportunities, they're not actually all that common at this track. No, not of course, but of course the, the, the cars aren't the same manufacturer series. One of the best things about manufacturer series to me is all the cars are some of the highlights to me at these events. And of course, it's a very long race, this one as well, actually 35 laps. So it's going to last a, a fair amount of time. What do you think the strategies are going to be for the teams, for the drivers? How are they going to work together and integrate this as best as they can? Well, similar to big endurance races, just about being there so you can be there at the end. So get the first two stints out the way as quick and as trouble-free as possible. Then focus on that first stint. That's the power stint. And we'll get in there and make sure your car is there in contention at the end. If, if you go too hard at the start, they always say you can't win it at T1. And this is definitely going to be an example of that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's have a look then, shall we? And get our drivers out on to the stage here in Amsterdam as we split the screen and welcome on our 12 manufacturers who make it on to the stage ahead of the World Series Showdown in Amsterdam. Please welcome onto the stage Team Renault. Guy Barbara and then uh, 
alongside Renault's drivers. You've got uh, Alex Lopez and Juan Pessoa. McLaren make their way on to the stage. Let's see what the British manufacturer is going to be able to do. Next up is Team Toyota. Adriana Carazza, Koke Lopez and uh, Rakuta Kobayashi making their way over to their rig. Next up, we have uh, Team Lamborghini lining up ninth on the grid. Will Murdoch, Randall Hayward and Kadaka there. Making their way on to the stage then, please welcome Team Genesis. Team Help, Nikki Romero and Yuki Sasaki. And next up, we have Team Mazda. Let's see what they are going to be able to do. Yura Okamoto and Robbie Heck are their driver lineup here tonight. Next up, Team Subaru, uh, Team Mercedes AMG, I should say, rather. They will line up next on the grid with Lucas Benelli, Tomoaki Yamanaka as well. And then we have uh, fifth on the grid. It is Team Nissan, Ryuto uh, Kokobun, Medi Hafidi and Matteo Estevez. Team Honda next up, making their way on to the stage here in Amsterdam. Nebatani, Valerio Gallo, Jao Pessoa are their three drivers that will be lining up on the grid. Time for Team Porsche, heading the second row of the field. What are the German manufacturer going to be able to do here tonight in Amsterdam? Just two drivers for them, of course, with that Helen Estrosa being out due to his injury. As we said earlier on, we wish him a very speedy recovery, and we are sure that he's going to be cheering on from his home in Chile tonight. Team Subaru lining up second on the grid. An incredible lap for Killian Drummond, but it wasn't quite enough for the Frenchman to secure pole position. Roberto Sternberg, Takuma Miyazono making up that driver lineup. And pole position then here tonight for the World Series Showdown in the Manufacturers' Cup. Please welcome the top three drivers, Rodrigo Ridolago, Seiya Suzuki and Thomas Laboutele for Team BMW. Well, they now ask for your respect, please, for the national anthem of our host country here in the Netherlands. And here are your drivers then, 36 of them will take to the track here tonight with one goal in mind, to be crowned as the winner of the Manufacturers Cup for the World Series Showdown in 2023. Compared to Monaco last year, I think this is one of the strongest manufacturers classes that we've ever had. Toyota, toujours au top. Porsche aussi, qui vont être très forts. Subaru. They're just coming off of winning last year, so they got a lot of momentum behind them. I think also Toyota, uh, for the history that has been winning many races. The reason why Toyota and Subaru have dominated the last four years in the Manufacturer Series is because they have both good cars and also good lineups. Manufacturers Cup champions! For the Manufacturers Cup, we're going to race in uh, Suzuka. Suzuka is one of my favorite tracks. Oh my God, it's the, it's the ultimate track, right? It's a circuit where all the cars are at the same rhythm. It really brings out the best in the driver. You know, you can really make a difference uh, from corner to corner. Everything bleeds together. It's a beautiful course to see. With the dynamic method, it's very interesting. It actually makes 
uh, the difference I think on how you prepare the strategy. The weather conditions which are going to be pretty unpredictable. And making the right call at the right time can be the difference between you know winning and losing. Because we know that it's going to be dynamic weather but we don't know when the rain will come or even if it will come or not. But it's those kind of conditions I like to work in and I feel like with the Honda I pretty much have the experience. Mazda is a good team this year. Uh, I think we have a good shot at uh, getting a really good result. 自分たちの AMG も今回かなり強いメンバーでレースに挑むことができるので必ず優勝したいと思います。I think this year we're definitely going to go for it. Of course, I would like to really be on podium this time. That's my target for the Manufacturers Cup. Well, we're just moments away from getting the Manufacturers Series, uh, Manufacturers Cup World Series showdown underway here tonight in Amsterdam. We're very much looking forward to seeing what is uh, going to happen here. As the driver said, the Suzuka circuit, a very big challenge, a long race, possibly a little bit of unpredictable weather coming into play as well. It's active weather, so anything can happen here, really. Yeah, amazing circuit here. And a quick wave from our international commentators. We are live in seven different languages. Of course, English is the best, as you know, but uh, <laughs> great to have everyone together again. We're one big family here at GT, as cliche as that sounds, so it's awesome to be all together together again in person. The only reason you said that is because you wanted them all to translate that English is the best, right? Yeah, on yeah their did, stream. It, did, did yeah. it work? And now they're going to have to do it again. <laughs> uh, let's have a look, shall we, at the grand final details then ahead of this one. So Group 3 cars, racing hard and medium tyres are available for them. As we know, active weather is on for this one. They must use each driver at least once and they must drive for a minimum of six laps. It's a 35 lap race. There's one times fuel consumption, so not really too much to worry about. Two times tire wear, a rolling start, 18 corners, one of the greatest racetracks in the world. I cannot wait. The yeah, overtaking spots, of course, down at turn 16 and turn one with a draft. Also, if you're feeling a little bit buggy, you can do it at turn 11. Of course, we saw uh, uh, back in the old days with Kumu Kobayashi had a, a corner named after him down there. So uh, <laughs> a great spot to overtake. The two times tire wear rate, by the way, based it means that for whatever one lap you do on circuit, it's two times the tyre wear, so two laps on the tyre. Yeah, absolutely right. So, each tyre compound, as we say, must be used once over the course of this one, and these Group 3 machines, well, they do bite, and of course, different cars have uh, different variations of, of tyre wear as well, and if that inclement weather does come into play over the, the course of this one, then it's going to come down to being a game of strategy. Who decides to go onto what tyre compound when, whether you go for an intermediate set of tyres and hope that the rain doesn't get too heavy, whether it gets extremely wet and you end up having to then make another pit stop. There could be anything happening. Yeah, definitely. The best thing is the drivers have no idea what's going to happen. Of course, that's why you have a team behind you on the team radio advising you on what to do at what stage of the race. That's why the Manufacturer Series series is one of my favourite ones to watch because it's all about that team element. It can be won and lost by the person not driving, which I think is fantastic. Well, we had you guys predicting a winner earlier on and 31% of you think that Subaru are going to win, but just 1% behind, it's Team Toyota there. So it's pretty even Stevens up the top. Third comes in with McLaren there as well. I mean, that's going to be an interesting one because McLaren are down in 11th place on the grid. Hey, nothing's impossible and anything yeah. could happen in motor racing, as we well know. So you have to say, though, Subaru looking really, really strong. And Toyota's form since 2019 has been incredible. So you can't count them out either. No, you can't. I mean, I, I, I can see why they have the percentage. But shout out to the 10% of McLaren fans here. Uh, <laughs> glad, glad you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look then down uh, to Julia, who is going to be catching up with our team that starts on pole position for the Eight. World Series Showdown Manufacturers <laughs> Cup race. She Eight. is with the three drivers from Team BMW. Well, not three, because we've got, Tom, they've got things to do. Like, one of them is just getting ready. Let's give a round of applause. Brilliant qualifier. Amazing. Uh, so, uh, how, how do you feel? Do you feel confident now after that qualifying race? I'm <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually still uh, shaking a little bit, but uh, I'm hoping to take this momentum all the way into the finals. And um, how was the competition? Was it tough? Was it tough or was it easy? Was it easy to beat them? Competition, generally,難易度どれぐらいですか？結構大変でしたか？それとも、あのもうあの行けいけで全然問題なかったって感じですか？どうでした？そうですね。去年と比べると今シーズンは結構もう大変な時もいっぱいあったんですけど。yeah, so I mean, compared to last year, um, I, I did have a few moments where there were pretty close calls, but uh, yeah. I think, uh, you know, I made it here and I think uh, I'll make it all the way into the finals. So. Well, hey, this is good. We got some confidence. How are you feeling? You feel good? Yeah, I feel really good. Uh, the car was great in qualifying, but 
it's not even 5% of the job done because when the rain will come, uh, some cars will be more suited to that. So mm. we'll need to be very careful. Okay. And when the track will dry, it's always going to be very tricky. So it's all about not making mistakes, keeping it clean. And uh, yeah, qualifying is really nothing done. So. Yeah, OK, OK. Well, no, this is the right strategy, of course. And, you know, let's give them a big round of applause. Wish them luck. Uh, all the competitors are a big luck. Uh, yeah, we'll chuck it back up to you, Tom and Jimmy. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Jules. Great to hear there from Sai Suzuki and from Thomas Laboutelet for, for Team BMW. But we are now then about ready to get this one underway. It is the World Series Showdown for the Manufacturers' Cup here in Amsterdam. Let's get ready to go racing here tonight. 12 manufacturers on the grid, but only one can be crowned as the winner here tonight. Who's it going to be? The drivers then ready to go ahead of the World Series showdown for the Manufacturers' Cup. There's Guy Barbara lining up for Team Renault. They will be in 12th position on the grid. What are they going to be able to do from there? But here is how the rest of the field lines up in Suzuka ahead of a 35-lap race here tonight. Pole position for Team BMW. It'll be Regalado who will line up. As their starting driver, Team Subaru with Takumi Miyazono at the helm lines up second on the grid. Then it's Team Porsche with Sasaki and Honda with Jao Pessoa, the Brazilian driver, taking to the start of this race. Then Mateo Estevez for Team Nissan in P5. Mercedes AMG with Tomoaki Yamanaka. And then you've got Mazda with Okamoto in P7. Alongside them will be Genesis with Dean Help, the American driver. Lamborghini have got Will Murdoch lining up ninth place on the field. With Adriano Carazza for Team Toyota, Maya down in 10th position. Team McLaren with Mizuno in 11th place. And then 12th is going to be Guy Barbara for Team Renault. He will start the race for the field. Now, of course, medium and hard tyres are available for the drivers. Everybody's starting on hard tyres, aside from Subaru, who have gone for an alternative strategy here, JB. So what that says to me is that Miyazono wants a fast start in that Subaru to try and make a gap as quick as possible. We know that BMW is fairly rapid down the straight, but of course that Subaru, uh, very light, very quick for the technical stuff. So we'll keep an eye on him. Otherwise, it's uh, the same strategy up and down the field so should be fairly equal on the tyres as we get through the first few laps. Well the drivers then coming around the final corner ready to get racing action underway Team BMW their charge being led by Rodrigo Regalado a younger brother uh, to the other Regalado driver who has competed in the World Series as of to date let's get ready then to get racing shall we the grand final for the Manufacturers Cup for the World Series showdown here in Amsterdam is about to get underway 12 manufacturers taking it to the grid, 35 laps of action, but only one can be crowned as the winner. It's lights out and we're racing here for the World Series showdown for the Manufacturers' Cup in Amsterdam at the Suzuka circuit. Team BMW lead the charge over the timing line, but look at Porsche already trying to launch an attack on Team Subaru. Mercedes getting their elbows out seemingly into the first corner as well. They all managed to make it through turn one even Stevens, but Honda around a little bit wide there. That leaves the door open for Nissan, who get themselves up and into fourth place. Yeah, nice opportunity driving there from Nissan. You can see how much quicker Miyazono is there. Has to get on the brakes, almost gets there, backed into one of Porsche there. So Miyazono trying to find a way around. Really trying the outside now. Bit of contact there with the BMW in front. Very impatient is the Subaru driver at the moment. Of course, a reminder, we do have live stewards here, so contact really is what we want to be doing on these first few laps. But if you go up to the deck for the first time, it's BMW, Subaru, Porsche, and Nissan up in into P4, already instant under investigation, into the deck for the first time, and that Subaru is glued to the back of the BMW, has a bit of a half move there. Oh, I mean, they're wide. wide! They're wide, Subaru are going through, Porsche are going through, Nissan, and also Honda taking the opportunity here. Side by side we are for the race lead, but somehow Miyazono manages to hold on, Nissan. and look at all the inside.
outside this and through into second as well. They go up the inside of Team Porsche. Wow, what a dramatic couple of corners. BMW from the race lead down into fifth place. And we're side by side for second here with Porsche versus Nissan on the run into the spirit curve. Yeah, awful start there for BMW now. It's Nissan and Porsche are side by side. Nissan has the inside line. Should be able to outbreak the Porsche there. But the Porsche has the grip one way around. Gets biffed by the Honda. The bump drop there. And the Honda following the Nissan through on that inside line using the camber of the corner. And up to P3 goes Honda. So it's all chopping and changing on his first few laps here. But that's allowed Team Subaru and Takuma Miyazono up front uh, already eke out a 1.2 second gap. He's already out of the draft. And this Nissan now is looking back over the wrist. Well, you can see the Honda looking. Will he go for a move up the inside then? This Nissan goes somewhat defensive. What a first lap here at Suzuki. You wouldn't think it's an endurance race, would you? It's kicking off a bit further back as well. Genesis have just picked the pocket of Toyota uh, for eighth position. 1.9 seconds is the advantage that Takuma Miyazono holds at the end of the first lap, which is perfect for them. As you say, Jimmy, out of the slipstream range, and you'd expect them to extend that here as well, because, of course, they've got the medium compound of tyre. Honda now side by side here with Nissan down the start finish rate. Nissan with the inside line with correct position. But, of course, they're in a really unfortunate position here, because if they start attacking, they might leave themselves open to attack, and Nissan hit with a one-second penalty for the first corner me melee as well. I'm not too surprised with that, to be honest. They were very punchy on the first few corners. Definitely some contact there as well. So that one-second penalty will be served at the penalty line. Just a bit further around on the lap. Meanwhile, Honda, Porsche and a Mercedes uh, AMG in the background. Not quite there uh, in contention right now. Bit of a gap, though, between fifth and sixth. Lamborghini dropped off a little bit. We told that Lamborghini not too fast in the drive, but not a bad start for Lambo after P6. Not so, bad. Uh, yeah. not bad at all. Not bad at all. Yeah, and I was just about to say sorry to interrupt you there, Jimmy, but Toyota pitted at the yeah. end of the last lap. They got onto the medium tyre. They had a bit of a shocker, really. They started quite well and then just got a little bit mired and involved in a few incidents. So they've decided to pit from the hard tyres onto the mediums, give them a bit more pace. Of course, they've got a nice bit of clear air in front of them here as well. And if this inclement weather comes into play in this race, as we're expecting it to do so, then that could really throw the cat amongst the pigeon. And you wonder whether that might prove to be a good decision there for Toyota. But let's wait and see as we look at Nissan. They've got that one second penalty. They're going to lose a handful of places is here because of course Honda, Porsche, Mercedes all very very close behind they're about to come then into that penalty zone is the Nissan with Matteo Estevez behind the wheel of it he's going to pull off the racing line and it's going to allow the retaining field to go through so hero to zero stuff here for team Nissan as they serve that one second penalty and it drops them right down the order Honda go through Porsche go through Mercedes go through do Lamborghini pick their pocket as well no not quite so Nissan then from second down to fifth yeah, so I mean, uh, hard time to get a penalty to start there, but now it's Porsche and AMG in the background having a little bit of a squabble as well. As the battle for second now goes down to three cars, Honda second, Porsche third, Mercedes AMG in fourth. This hand's still there in the background, but now they've been caught, of course, by Lamborghini and Genesis. Uh, all the cars uh, covered by uh, not very much time at all. Meanwhile, in front of the field, uh, Subaru have gone flying away as AMG look around the outside. The Porsche try and cut back the Porsche sideways on the way into the first corner. I think maybe a little bit of contact from the AMG and uh, managing to gather it up so far. Asaki managing to hold off uh, to, make, uh, to make Yamanaka behind. We know Yamanaka's fast, so we'll see what he can do in that AMG. Genesis have picked up a penalty here. Let's have a look here with Nissan. This is down towards the first corner on the rolling start. They picked up a one-second penalty. I think they're going to go to the back of uh, the Honda. Yeah, they are. That's why Honda ended up going wide. Yeah. Nissan picked the pocket, but of course now they've lost out very dearly. Yeah, fairly easy one that uh, basically moves them out of the way, so you can't do that in these events. But uh, here is our leader, six seconds up the road, which is all well and good, but it's a very, very close uh, scrap behind, which we are a bit more interested in at the moment. But what Miyazone's got to do is just get his head down like he is doing now, make as big a gap as possible on those medium tyres. So it's Honda, Porsche, Mercedes still, and they're all under pressure. The thing is, if you're the Porsche right now, you have to look to attack the car in front, but also take him one eye in the middle and try and keep the car behind you. Then behind them, Lamborghini and Nissan are going side by side. This is the 35 lap race. I feel like I need to remind these guys that. Yeah, they're fighting like it's the last lap of the last race of the season, aren't they? And you can see they look side by side with Lambo versus Nissan into that left hander. Lamborghini now throwing up the inside. So a great start from uh, Will Murdoch, who was down in ninth on the grid, now up into fifth place. So the British driver really making headway. And the thing is, if these three drivers of Honda, uh, Porsche and Mercedes start squabbling amongst one another, it's going to bring the back of the play and Porsche that just into the back of Honda down the back straight. The Honda's not quite got that, the legs of the Porsche, so went to defend the position quite late there. And now another run into that AMG goes up the inside of the Porsche, does it? Yeah, up the inside of the Porsche. A very bold move by the AMG. Has he managed to get alongside there on the Honda? 
contact there with the AMG, pushes him out, and now the AMG's gone from third and now fighting for fourth. Actually, it's lost fourth to the Lamborghini, and now it's six, six cars together as we go down towards T1 against seven cars together. Who's going to come out on top? We've got Mercedes, Nissan, three wide. Who's at the head of his pack? And are they going to come out in one piece? Somehow they do. Honda leading the pack at the moment, and Mercedes losing positions. Well, this is like watching a NASCAR race. They're so close out on track. You can throw a blanket over these six drivers as they go through. Yeah, Lamborghini, all that up to P4. That, 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 that is an awful side. So Lamborghini really making the most of this first corner scrum. So here is the contact at the start, I think, between Subaru and BMW. No, sorry, it's BMW going wide on the first lap, allowing Subaru through. So that's how that move happened. And uh, that was uh, Yamlaki's yeah, reaction, so apparently. Stay calm, stay, stay calm. No aggressive, OK? OK. No aggressive, but he ain't going to listen to that. <laughs> Never. Not, not in a thousand years. But here we are, back to the fight at the front. Uh, Honda, Porsche, Lamborghini, Mercedes, Nissan, Genesis and Mazda, all covered by about a second and a half as we go into the hairpin. Lamborghini at the inside Dude. contact. Oh. oh, no. Honda round. Are they round? They spin half spin. They managed to keep the car in one piece. But, oh, my word, that was such a mess into the hairpin there, Tom. Oh, that was scrappy, wasn't it, there? And, well, it's been a profit for Lamborghini, but are they going to keep that position? Are they going to be uh, deemed to, of course, a bit of unfair contact. There was a lot going on there. Of course, a massive concertina effect as Mazda go up the wow. inside of Mercedes. Bit of contact with them there as well as they come through the spoon curve. Not a usual overtaking spot, but the Mazda there trying to make that move stick. Run out a little bit wide. Honda and Lamborghini under investigation for colliding with another car. And now we are still nose to tail. Lamborghini and Will Murdoch have been able to pull out a 1.3 second advantage, but are they going to be able to hold it? On board, we ride here with Yamanaka. Sasaki in the Porsche directly behind him at the moment in towards the left. Left of 130R we go. Does anybody make a move? Honda there looking to the outside of Mazda. Looking up the inside there is Nissan. Whoa! Are they going to get stopped? Oh. No. Into the side of Porsche. They managed to make about three places, but it was a bit robust, to say the least. My guy, he came over from England with that overtake attempt, didn't he? That was a <laughs> massive lunge from Team Nissan, and undoubtedly some sort of penalty, I think, there. You can't be doing that uh, in these events. We'll let our stewards, who are much more qualified than us, handle that. Team BMW, meanwhile, down to still P9. Of course, they were pole. Genesis and Porsche uh, in our foreground contact as well. Porsche going from hero to zero, now down to P8 after that contact with the Nissan Lamborghini getting a penalty as well. So almost happening too quick for us to keep up with. But uh, these guys really really going at it right now in these first few laps. Yeah, they're treating it like a sprint race here. The thing is, they've started squabbling amongst one another. And look who's in the background now. You've got BMW, you've got McLaren in the mix there as well. This is what happened down at the hairpin. On board we are in the Genesis. Keep an eye out on the left-hand side of your picture just up the road. Lambo into the side of Honda. That sends Honda spinning round. Porsche and Mercedes with nowhere to go. Genesis in the walls there That's too. That is so bad. That is so bad. Pretty bad, he says. Is that a reflection of his own driving? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> one of those things I think we just caught up in the squabble there. So, interestingly, of course, you do have to use both dry compounds of tires, and Karatsa at the back of the field in Toyota has gained about 10 seconds since his pit stop, pitting early to get onto that medium compound of tires. He's not got to use the hard compound anymore. So, um, that's a very interesting strategy there by Toyota. Meanwhile, Mazda there flashing furiously behind the Nissan, saying, Let me buy, I am so much faster. Look at the weapon radar rain coming in there from the west of the circuit so in a couple of laps time we're going to see our first sprinkles of rain which I, this race doesn't need to get any more exciting i don't think i think it's good how it is well the most westerly point of the track is down at the spoon curve so that's where you'd expect the rain to hit if it does so and the thing is it's a very realistic possibility we could end up with a one part wet and one part dry of the circuit here we are though with mazda versus nissan as they go two by two down the back straight mazda with the overspeed and with position genesis now to the inside whoa contact through 130r are they going to face the right direction yes they do who's gonna be last of the late breakers into the casio triangle on the inside we go porsche in a bit of a sandwich in the mix there as well genesis and honda emerge side by side with one another on the exit of the corner genesis now with the track speed honda are going to be shuffled out here because porsche have got the advantage of the slipstream and honda have got absolutely nothing in their locker at all here they then duck back behind the german manufacturer here too as we come down the start finish rate in towards the first corner now genesis here on the inside of porsche contact again two by two in the background here with Mazda as well. Goodness me, there is action wherever you look and it's going to go three wide in towards these S-Bends. How are they doing this? I don't know, Tom. How are, how are these cars still on circuit at this point? It's uh, every position there, uh, every corner, sorry, there is a position change. Mazda currently ahead, his team Lamborghini, team radio. The is very slow at coming. Okay, just maintain it, just keep pushing. Yeah. 
the rain, uh, somebody coming. So the, 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 uh, the guys who do the team radio, uh, sorry, the, uh, the radar as well, so they know what's going on. So, but look at that, the stewards unsurprisingly trying to uh, pick apart the mess that's been the last few laps. It's been, uh, it's been rabbit, <laughs> there's no other word for it. This time with a one second penalty here as well then due to uh, some contact that we saw. So yeah, not good there for Team Nissan because they're going to be really mired in and amongst the pack and lose a, a fair few positions they've got on the inside of them. Uh, they have Genesis in the mix there for sixth place as Mazda now finally have a little bit of clear track in front of them. Let's see if we can piece together what happened. This is where Nissan picked up that one second penalty. It's into the Casino truck. They go to the inside. The door's shut there by Mazda. Into the side of Porsche. They go too. Porsche then ended up in a bit of a sandwich here with Mazda on the outside. And, well, pick the bones out of that one. So Mazda were quite late coming across there, weren't they? Bit, quite, quite a late pitch for me. But uh, the thing is, all these cars squabbling. Look at the gap now to Subaru in front. Mercedes AMD to Subaru. 15 seconds in six laps, seven laps now for Miyazono. This is all playing into the hands of Team Subaru. Renault now and this hand that there with that penalty dropping You've got to be kidding me. Genesis uh, not happy currently of how things are going at the moment. You can see now, track getting a little bit darker. Getting a bit of a different shade of cloud now over Suzuka Circuit as we go with Lamborghini. Honda opting to come into the pit lane to go onto those medium compounder tyres, try and make up a little bit of time, also get that tyre out the way. Yep. So they haven't got to use any more drive compounder tyres after that pit stop. That's the thing, they have got to use both tyre compounds here in this race, regardless of what happens. Now Lamborghini sound somehow up into third position with it all kicking off behind so despite that second penalty that they got, they now sit in third position, which is a prime opportunity for the Italian manufacturer, Will, Will Murdoch, at the wheel. Every time they come into the pit lane, by the way, they must change a uh, driver. So when you see drivers going into the pits, that means that they must change over uh, to their next driver, and they will have to uh, make sure that uh, they are able to try and keep a similar pace as the one who went before them. Now it's started to just slow down uh, a little bit in terms of the action further back. You can see their master now with a nice comfortable cushion. Genesis with a half second penalty due to exceeding track limits there presumably but it's nose to tail further down as well. You've got uh, in the mix there Porsche, BMW just behind, McLaren, Renault also on their coattails and then Nissan who had that penalty just a lap ago. It's dropped them right down into 10th place. This has been a great opening stint uh, for Will Murdoch there to Lamborghini and there is that weather radar once more on the top right hand corner of your screen. Getting closer and closer is the rain and looks like it's going to be fairly heavy as well by the time we get that middle of that cell there. So we'll keep an eye on that as we keep an eye on the racing. Uh, Genesis leading this little pack P5 from Porsche and then behind them BMW and McLaren uh, who've had a decent start from pretty much the back of the grid up to P8 now and mostly out of trouble but now uh, may be promoted as Genesis will serve that 0.5 second penalty. That will allow Porsche through up into P5. They go. And uh, it's, getting to, it's starting to settle down a little bit, but as you say, Tom, look, cars still separated by less than a couple of seconds. Lamborghini there in your foreground, P3. Here comes Mazda and that rotary-powered RX car. And now Porsche, Genesis, BMW, Renault and uh, McLaren together, very close on circuit as well. A little bit of contact there, and this hand behind the temp trying to come back from the penalty they had earlier on. McLaren going into the pit lane then at the end of lap eight, as they begin, uh, sorry, as they begin lap eight, rather, I should say, the end of lap seven. It's getting greyer and greyer by the second. That weather is not going to be far away. And as you saw with the radar a few moments ago, it is going to be what we we're expecting, a relatively heavy intensity uh, there also. So be interested to see how this one plays out. McLaren then into the box. They go from the hard tyres onto the medium. It'll drop them right to the back of the field, but of course they've done that tyre change already. Donovan Parker takes over from Mizuno behind the wheel. Let's see what the American is going to be able to do. Nissan pick up yet another warning for colliding with another car as McLaren emerge back onto the track. Now here's Lamborghini putting the pressure onto the back of Mercedes. Tomoaki Yamanaka still behind the wheel. Will Murdoch though driving very fast, setting very similar lap times here to Mercedes. In fact, he was a tenth of a second quicker than the German brand last time around. And you wonder whether he's going to try and launch an attack before too long because he is closing right up. And speaking of closing, that weather, that's closing in as well. You now what's interesting on this is Team Toyota who stopped very early on. Uh, that there gap to the back of the pack was about 20 seconds. It's now six seconds to the back of the Nissan there. So they have really used that clean air. Uh, uh, they've been clever. They didn't want to get caught up in all this, this scrap that was happening here. But uh, speaking of scrapping, we're now going back to second and third. Will Murdoch's having the drive of his life there in the Lamborghini. Right up behind Yamanaka in the Mercedes. You can see Yamanaka having to really wrestle the car sideways coming out of the spoon curve. And now trying to find a way through. I say that ducking 
out of the draft there. I think maybe to try and get the run coming in to the chicane. He's now right in the draft, has to get on the brakes there, I think. So you, can, you can get some of the aero taken away when you're following that closely. But uh, I think just biding his time somewhat at the moment is Will Murdoch still following the AMD. Great onboard pictures here uh, with the Lamborghini. It's good to see Lamborghini representing well. In comes into the pits, becomes uh, AMG then. So they blink first. You have to wonder, is that the right decision with the rain coming in? Well, the thing is, they've got to use both tyre compounds regardless. So they want to get it out of the way. And clearly, uh, Yamanaka was struggling a little bit. Nissan also following in the same strategy. That releases Will Murdoch into a nice bit of clear air. He'll be enjoying that and will try and take as much of an advantage of it as we possibly can. Uh, last time around, Takimi Miyazono, 150.1. Lamborghini with Will Murdoch, a 2.0.5. So that is unbelievable pace from Takumi Miyazono. I know he's on the medium compound of tyre, but that difference, as Luca Tonelli takes over at the helm here for uh, Mercedes-AMG, is vastly different. But now, look at the weather. He's getting closer and closer by the second. Surely, another couple of laps, he's going to start coming in here. And importantly, it's not going to be the entire circuit. It's going to be the spoon curve first that gets the weather. That's the closest to the cell right now. So we might get a situation where one half of the circuit is wet and one half is dry. And what do you do in a situation on tyres? You have to try and be as uh, safe and consistent as possible. Yeah, don't forget, of course, if you're watching directly in GT7, you can redeem your free engine swap ticket and, of course, take advantage of the brand new Toyota Ambulance High Medic and, I don't know, do an engine swap in that, put a 2JZ engine in or something like that. I'm still waiting for the ambulance race. I don't know where it is. <laughs> that, that would have been such good content. Maybe yeah, next they, time. Well, they tried to, but there would be no medics at the side of the circuit, so... No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Looking here, though, with uh, Mazda, Porsche and Genesis all very close to one another. Mazda, that front-engine, rotary-powered RX Vision Gran Turismo car. I think I saw a couple of spots of rain just beginning to float onto the track there. Maybe it was just my eyes deceiving me, but it's certainly beginning to look a lot greyer than it was just a handful of laps or so ago. Genesis here in the slipstream with the straight line speed. Are they going to go to the inside of Porsche into 130R? Yes, they certainly are. Dean Hill behind the wheel, Sasaki behind the wheel of the Porsche just up the road. Into the left hand and they back out of it at the last moment. Yeah, not really a sensible choice there to put a, a nose in. It tends to only end one way uh, when you do that. One big crash. So, Master Porsche, Genesis, we're on move right now. A little bit of uh, oversteer there on throttle. A bit uh, keen on throttle. Master, oh my god, the Genesis is having a, a real trouble there on the throttle. Porsche, though, all over the back of the Master. These guys were uh, very close earlier on. The Porsche seems to find a bit more pace now in the later part of his stint on the hard compound of tyres. Is there a way by through the T1? No, there's not. Um, if you can't make the pass, you sort of have to wait behind the car in front through the S's. So, I It'd be really interesting now to see that, what that weather's doing. So Lamborghini, this is Will Murdoch still out at the moment. 21 seconds behind Subaru. 21 seconds. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Think about pitting this lap. So think about pitting this lap. I'm sure they're going to very much appreciate having that broadcasted to the rest of the teams here <laughs> in the venue. But uh, uh, let's see how it's looking so murky there at the moment. It feels like it's just we're seconds away from the, from the first drops. And I think maybe uh, Will Murdoch, that, that could be a masterstroke from them if they pit for the right at the right time. I think this could be very interesting uh, for Will Murdoch and for Lamborghini if they are able to pull that strategy off. Uh, Team Toyota, by the way, who pitted on that first lap, now up into eighth place. The, top of the medium shod runners because they pitted so early and had clear track in front of them were able to really take advantage of that so they're in the pound seats because they're not far off the back of bmw they're not too far up the road of renault if everybody else in front pitted and went onto the medium compound of tires toyota would elevate themselves up into effectively that third place in this one so that would be a really beneficial set of circumstances for them as Porsche now go to the inside of Mazda into the spoon curve on the inside of the corner they go side by side they run Mazda here going to get roughed up on the outside possibly now an opportunity here for Genesis to go through as Porsche elevate themselves into third place and oh Mazda chopping the nose off of Genesis there and well that was a bit of a day late and a dollar short if you ask me and now it's not over yet though because Mazda alongside the Porsche using that straight line speed Genesis is going to try and follow them through around the outside gives the Mazda a little push to allow them through and now looking to the outside of oh, the uh, Chicane coming up. Oh, and then Jinx right at the last second to the inside. Want to oh. move on oh, a bit late though. Master in the tie barrier. No. Oh, and then contacts they come back on again. So uh, an interesting move there from Genesis. But I think the one that's going to probably land them in uh, trouble. Mazda taking the opportunity to pit. And Team Renault up into P3 from last on the grid. Weather's coming in now as well. So Renault up so high they'll probably have a nosebleed at this point, given the fact that they were down in 12th position on the uh, grid. Guy Barbara behind the wheel of that guy started the race he's still on lap nine behind the wheel of that machine as Mazda into the box they've gone for the intermediate tires early oh. as well the rain is now starting to come in on the radar as you can see
see it, but it's still early. There's no standing water. There's no sign of it at this part of the trap, but as you can see from the radar, it's the spoon curve where it's going to be most effective. Side by side on the exit of uh, turn one, of the exit of the pit lane there between Mazda and McLaren. Mazda just managed to get the overspeed, but of course there on the suboptimal compound of tyre for these conditions at this part of the circuit. You have to wonder, is that the right choice? I mean, at this point in the race, Tom, uh, there's going to be, am I saying that? There you go. If we go on board with Miyazono, spots of rain and Rivet, quite heavy rain there at the back of the circuit. You can see already Miyazono struggling for grip on those slick tyres, so maybe it was a master stroke there for Team Mazda getting onto those uh, intermediate tyres. They must have seen some of the rain on the, on the way through. You know what, well, let's just roll the dice and see if we can catch up to Team Subaru. Because look at that gap. 22 seconds, and that is on pace between Subaru and Lamborghini. So, uh, will we now see uh, Team Subaru and Takuma Miyazono dart into the pit lane and head on to a different compound of tyres? So, Frutica came, we come. Will they pull Alvin to the right-hand side of the circuit and come in? Yes, they do. Yeah, Subaru, they have a choice, I think. Yeah, Subaru to the pit lane. There'll be a driver change as well. So, Miyazono will be out of the car, and they will change over to another one of their drivers, either Sternberg or Killian Drumont. Let's wait and see which of the drivers that they choose. They did uh, have an opportunity to practice here earlier on today, so they'll know the different strengths and weaknesses of the drivers. Subaru going on to the intermediate compound of tyre here. Are any other teams, though, going to follow through as well? 23 seconds was the gap between Subaru and Lamborghini. Lambo also doing exactly the same thing. They're going for the hard to the... Uh, intermediate penalty. tire as well. Penalty, pit line penalty. Subaru with a three second pit line penalty so that they cut them. I thought his edge was a little bit wide there. Very firm rule here in the Grand Turismo events. If you cut the pit line on the entry or the exit, automatic three second penalty. So not the start that Killian Drummond wanted there on his stint there in the Subaru, but he's got a gap. So it's not the end of the world. Yeah, it's not too dramatic there for him, but certainly a little bit suboptimal as uh, Killian Drummond now takes over with that Subaru Genesis with a two second penalty uh, for colliding with another car. Presumably that'll be for the car that we saw down at the uh, yeah. Casio Triangle chicane a lap or so ago. So some teams decided to roll the dice and stay out on their dry tyres at the moment. It is Subaru, Lamborghini and Mazda who have gone on to the intermediate compound. Now, crucially, it's only wet at one or two parts of the track. The weather is certainly closing in. We know that much. We know it's going to be slippery at different points on this circuit, but it's not wet all round at the moment. So those intermediate tyres, when you come into the middle sector, they'll be fine because there's a bit of standing water enough to cool those tyres down. On the drier parts of the track, though, they're going to be burning them up and they're going to have no grip compared to the dry compounds. Yeah, I don't know, Tom. The first sector of the S is very, very heavy on tyre wear, but look, you see the, the, the rain's moving slowly over the circuit from the from the west there. So I mean, it's starting to get heavier. So maybe maybe just a tad too early for some of the intermediate calls there, but I don't think it'll matter too much there. Genesis in front of us got a two-second penalty. Let's see what uh, Team BMW think. Look at the, the spray. We for medium. The rain off. is gone. Yeah. Yeah, Toyota off, and look here on the inside, Porsche going through into the spoon curve and into second place. Hard tyres there, look at them, they're tippy-toeing round. Porsche getting themselves up through, Genesis repaying the favour. Toyota struggling to get the car in a straight line. So you spot on, Jimmy, the intermediate tyres are exactly the compound that these drivers need to be on, regardless of the fact that some of the circuits still dry. The part of the circuits that are wet are so wet that those dry tyres are going to be about as useful as an ashtray on a motorbike at this point. Anyone making their way through that uh, section now on the slick compound of tyres must be just so frustrated. The wrong choice to be made. You've got to be on those wet tyres now. The Porsche, well, they are in P2 with no pit stops. They're going to have to come in. Surely now they're going to have to come in. No, they're going around again. That makes no sense to me. It's a bold call there. You look can at see, the radar. Yeah, you can see it's coming in, but it doesn't look too heavy, though. It's still quite light. Oh, look at that wiggle there, though, for Drumont. Down in towards the first corner. He's struggling to get that car slowed down. I'm just trying to see if there's any weather that's coming through at the moment at the first corner. It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's still pretty dry at this part of the track, but it's definitely beginning to come in now. And this is crunch time. If you've left it out to make a gamble, surely this is the last roll of the dice that you can do on these dry tyres. Let's look at the lap time. So right now, the intermediate tyre, uh, best time is heck on the choice and four, and then it's 206s for the rest of the field. This so, is Toyota, uh, sorry, Jimmy. This is Toyota down to the spoon curve. Look at this. They're going to go straight into there, straight to the standing water, and straight off to the car park, effectively, on the outside of the spoon curve. Genesis following them through in sympathy here as well, and struggling to keep their car in a straight line. The upshot is that Porsche now up into second place on the hard compound of tyres. Yeah, mate. I don't know, I, I'm, I'm really lost on what tyre is the right one to be on right now. I think it is now starting to go towards 
being on that intermediate compound of tyre. Let's see how they handle the section of the course now. We're on board um, with Carazza in the Toyota. They're on the medium tyres. Porsche on the hard. Now, everyone in the sick compound of tyre, it's so important to work them hard. Try and keep the heat in them at this point. As soon as that heat goes away, you are doomed to look right into the spray. And straight away, they're both of them. They have to slow down as the car starts floating on top of the standing water. Look, Porsche, there's nothing they can do. Off they go. As go to Ocho as well, there's nothing they can do about it, but they're just passengers at this point. But for the rest of a circuit, it's worth being on the dry tight. The, the crawling round, look at the gap to oh, Subaru. Toyota picked up a 1.5 second penalty there, as a Porsche with a two second oh. penalty. Mercedes off, BMW off, they're going off like flies at the moment here. This is honestly, this is. This is, yeah, track limits, we're assuming. Genesis there struggling to keep their car in a straight line off onto the grass on the back straight. Mercedes on the medium tyres going through. Lamborghini are smiling ear to ear because they're on the medium compound, uh, sorry, the intermediate compound of tyre and are just closing hand over fist compared to them. Well, this is proving to be an absolutely fascinating race and we're not even halfway done at this point. Surely these teams that are on the dry tyres are going to have to come in. Look at it, it's raining now very heavily at this part of the circuit. So Porsche in, Toyota in, everybody else is on the dry tyres. They've got to come in. They've got absolutely no choice because they're going to be sitting ducks, no pun intended, with this wet weather. So Subaru, look at the gap they've got now. 20 seconds over the next car on the same strategy as them, which is Lamborghini. Lamborghini, great start from them, of course. Uh, Mazda also out there on the intermediate compound tyre, so uh, a good call there from Team Mazda, really elevating themselves back up the field. Uh, now we get uh, Jose Serrano getting back in the car for Team Porsche. Those penalties yet to be served, but uh, they have a lot more grip now, but it just goes to show uh, that being on the right tyre at the right time is absolutely crucial here at Suzuka. So then, Porsche sitting in fourth place, two second penalty, no further action between Lamborghini and Genesis for gliding with another, another car. Uh, Renault are the last team to blink and go on to the intermediate compound of tyre. I tell you what, this has worked out beautifully here for Mazda. They were the first team to blink and we wondered whether it might just be a little bit too early, but they've pulled an absolute blinder. Robbie Heck, the American driver behind the wheel, he's got the intermediate tyres on, he's lapping in the 208, 208.8. The only other driver that on track that is able to match that pace is Killian Drummond, who's a 208.5. Everybody else is significantly slower. Me? You continue. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Chat, chat, chat. So that's Mercedes there chat, in the chat. pit lane. Lucas Benelli out of the car. Baptiste Beauvoir going in. A bit of confusion there. A bit of a last minute change here for, uh, for them. And clearly that uh, caused a bit of panic amongst their team. And that's the importance, isn't it, about good communication, clear communication, making sure that everybody knows exactly what they should be doing so you don't have to rush around like that and put people on the back foot. Yeah, this, this is the thing here, of course, that each team, uh, uh, save Porsche, of course, missing Angel and Estroza, are comprised of three drivers. And of those three drivers, one of them is going to be be best in the rain. And maybe uh, that's Benelli being like, no, Baptiste, get in the car. I know you're fast in the wet. I don't want to be doing this. You get in the car to make up some of that time. So. Um, yeah, it's one of those things. You have to, it's, you have to adapt on the fly, especially in situations like this. Subaru romping away with this one. 21 seconds out in front. The rain is still. Oh, look at that! You can see very much coming down. And and this, of course, is now where the driving styles are going to come into play. Where, as you said, different drivers are going to be in the cars that are stronger in these conditions. How do you have to adapt as a driver to, to these wet conditions? What makes it different from a dry circuit to a wet circuit? Obviously, other than the water. Yeah, I mean, the, the easiest thing is you've got to be a bit softer with the car. You, you, you can't be as aggressive. That the car can't take doesn't have the same grip as before. And you might notice some of these drivers not all driving a traditional racing line, trying to avoid the rubber lay down the circuit on the dry tyre. Don't forget, of course, about the Gran Turismo movie campaign. You can redeem the free liveried GTR GT3 car that appears in the Gran Turismo movie. Just go on to GT7, follow the instructions, and look at this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here we are with uh, Nissan versus Honda then, side by side. They go down the start finish straight. Look at that standing water, these intermediate tyres chucking it all back up into the sky. Side by side in front we are here with Genesis versus BMW as well. Honda through on Nissan. Nissan off into the car park on the outside. They rejoin the circuit after exploring track limits. I think they might have to give that place up there, though, you know? Yeah, really strong start for Nissan, but it's just got worse as the rains come, so uh, that car may be not so in full of condition. So uh, here's a replay. Uh, here is Team Porsche. This is the lap before, and they're going to the intermediate tyre. You can just see there's nothing you can do. It's the most hopeless feeling. In the background, I can't even flying off. Well, I didn't see who that was. Um, but uh, it's the most hopeless feeling when you hit a wet patch on a slick tyre because you're just a passenger. I mean, I've 
I've done that a couple of times myself, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very scary. Makes your backside go like a rabbit's nose, yes. I'm sure. And here is McLaren then with Mercedes AMG just behind them. Behind the wheel of that Merck is Baptiste Beauvoir. How the tables turn, because Merck uh, qualified in sixth place. They sit in seventh place at the moment, but they were right up the sort of sharper end of the battles that we saw amongst the uh, sort of middle part of the field in the early stages of the race. You can see the weather radar there, so the heavy rain has kind of come through for the most part. It's going to start getting a little bit lighter as it stands for now. It's certainly not out of the woods yet, though the intermediate tyre looks like it's the compound to be on. But the other parts of the track, the eastern part of the circuit, that's where it's now at its heaviest. It's getting lighter at the other parts of it, at the west part, which is where, we, of course, we saw the rain in the first uh, instance, down here at the Spoon Curve. Yeah, so uh, obviously the uh, race directors fancying giving our guys a challenge, which we are 100% approval of here in the, uh, the commentary box. We love to see stuff like that. Another replay on the screen right now is Baptiste. Which tyre got McLaren? Which tyre got McLaren? Out the drivers on intermediate. Just asking there about the uh, McLaren tyres. Always good to know what your competitor is doing at the same time as we uh, go down. Look at the rain now. Uh, very heavy. You can barely see any sort of a uh, circuit there. The Honda getting it all wrong into the chicane, having to uh, slow down dramatically. Really struggling in the, in the wet there is the Honda. There's a good case here for the fact that these intermediate tyres might suddenly become a bit more uh, useless than they would like them to be because, of course, we're getting to the crossover point. We're expecting from what we understand about 221, 222, that's the crossover point for where the intermediate tyres are basically useless because they can't clear the standing water that's out on track. You need to go onto the full wet tyres in order to clear that. And look at it here, the most easterly part of the track coming through the first couple of corners. The standing water there, it's raining cats and dogs. Lap times last time around, around the 217 to 219 mark there and thereabouts. So we're not far away from that window as it stands. But the, the gamble here is, do you go into the pits, go onto the wet tyres in the hope that that'll be the right compound? Or do you just sort of brave it out on the intermediate tyre, try and stick with it? Because of course, we we know that the rain is set to get a little bit lighter as this race continues. Yeah, the constant, the concentration there in these conditions uh, is insane. You see that really trying to bite uh, as we go through and double up into the deck. Because once again, you have to deal with spray, you have to deal with the car underneath you trying to, to change ends every corner. You can see try, a lot of the, the drivers trying to avoid the car. That NSX is like a right handful in the background. So uh, McLaren in P6 leading the train to the back of the field now. Uh, AMG uh, in seventh, and here are uh, tenth and eleventh for uh, Honda actually getting by Nissan there. I think there was uh, an issue for Nissan as uh, they go the long way around or try to anyway. And uh, it just seems like it's every man for himself in these conditions. So coming now then out of the hairpin bend, just in front of them is BMW. Wow. How the tables turn for them. They started this one on pole position. They're now battling to oh. keep inside the top oh. 10. We're side by side, coming in towards the spoon curve here between Honda and BMW. Gallo, the former Nations Cup champion, behind the wheel of that car, up the inside he goes. Oh, and he's just not able to use the momentum he had there. Had to break early, had to back out of it because he didn't have enough grip on the inside to get the car slowed at the time he wanted. And Valerio is grabbing this car by the scruff of its neck. You can see it's moving all over the place through the corners, trying to carry as much speed as possible. Of course, here's our pole sitter, uh, Thomas Abuch, the man who set the pole lap as well. This hand in the background, getting it wrong off onto the runoff. Luckily there, that runoff existing, so there's no issue uh, for them. They can rejoin it safely, but uh, it, it seems every new lap is a new experience for these guys. Team Radio. It's getting really bad on this part of the track. Really bad. Oh, oh, McLaren are off! It's really bad indeed! Team Radio, we just heard, straight off into the barrier on the outside of the final corner. That leaves them open to attack from pretty much everybody. And look at them, they're going through these corners, sliding around like a cheater on an ice rink. There's just no grip at this part of the track. The intermediate tyres can't clear the standing water, and there's nothing these drivers can do at the moment. We a lot about sim racing, Tom, is that we aren't afraid to go racing in the rain. We'll, we'll, we'll go racing all day long as McLaren trying to gather it back up again, but you can see at this point, you know, definitely, um, definitely uh, spooked by that, I think. Very easy to have that instant there. We're at the crossover point now, Jimmy, in terms of the lap times. 2.25 here for Subaru, 2.21 for Lamborghini last time around. They've whittled down that gap to uh, Subaru to 16.6 .6 seconds. It was up at 21 just two laps ago. But what do you do here? Do you hope that the track gets better? Well, do you stay it, out it? on the intermediate compound tyre? Do you take a risk? I say a risk or you go onto the, the wet compound of tyre, which will have more grip in these conditions. But the moment it starts to dry out, that tyre is going to come away from you. You can see there, big lock 
strength of these guys, scrubbing the front wheels, trying to slow the car down with understeer into the hairpin. It's a karting technique, not something you tend to see um, in, the, in GT cars, but oh my, that Mazda is a right hand from now. You taught me that, actually, yeah, how, to, yeah. how to drive in the wet, just stick a load of lock on and, and basically stops you from spinning out. Yeah, it's, it's a safety technique, but it isn't always the fastest. So um, here is the Mazda, Robbie Heck, of course, a great call early on to promote the Mazda up to P4, uh, going to those intermediates early, but now struggling on pace compared to those around him, much so actually, in fact, than the cars around him at the moment, uh, and now being reeled in by Team Toyota. Reminder, these guys pitted right at the start of the race, so, and at one point were 20 seconds at the back of the field, they're now P5. Yeah, this is unbelievable here for Team Toyota. They've pulled an absolute worldie of a strategy. As you look here, Robbie Heck behind the wheel of the Mazda just keeps it within the confines of the circuit. Breathing down their neck, though, is Team Toyota. Behind the wheel of that is Rakuto Kobayashi at the moment, who actually is racing himself in, real, in the real world over in Japan at the moment. And uh, he's doing a, a pretty good job as it stands. But look at the standing water here through the final corner. We're at the crossover point, 2.22s, 2.23 lap times coming in. The intermediate tyres, you can see them just scratching trying to fight for grip that just isn't there. Yeah, you see the different line for the Toyota worked out much better, much better speed there onto the straight and uh, not a, a space to pass down there. But that's just a differing line there. You see, look, look at the Toyota driver, a lot wider line so we can get a better exit here. Hex now have to really be careful on the throttle. Look at the exit for Toyota right now onto the back. Uh, it's that the sharper corner is a lot more difficult to deal with in these wet conditions. So just open it up, run the car around. Look at this awesome uh, display of skill here from both drivers. Completely different tactics now. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Toyota go clean around the outside of the Mazda. Is he going to try it? All the way around the outside goes Kobayashi. What a move there from the Toyota driver using those wet lines to his advantage. And through he goes up into P4. That was some move. Look at that. Sideways on the exit of the left-hander as well. Rakuta Kobayashi driving absolutely superbly. Now Toyota from the back of the field up into fourth place. This is working out beautifully for them thus far. You know, and that's, I think, one of the first experiences of seeing real-life experience helping you in a sim. Mm. It's always your way around. It, it shows you how close uh, Gran Turismo is nowadays. Absolutely, yeah. The wet line proved to be very prominent. And one of the things we say in Gran Turismo is find your line. Well, that is exactly <laughs> what Rakuto Kobayashi was able There's to do trailer. there. <laughs> exactly. Look at this a little bit further back, though. This is uh, Mercedes. You've got Honda in there. You've got Genesis behind the wheel of those cars. Beauvoir, Gallo, and Yuti Sasaki as well there in the uh, Genesis. So three drivers, no to tell they run uh, between them at the moment side by side a little bit on further back there almost as well so Honda there looking for the outside line we saw Gallo taking this car by the scruff of his neck and look at that oh great momentum for Valerio Gallo he's gonna have the inside line to the smooth curve can he get that Honda stop though yes he can it's all it stopped raining at that part of the track hasn't it almost and Honda and Gallo up through into sixth place. Fantastic driving from the Italian. You can just about see now a darker patch on the tarmac. That's the water starting to fade away from that part of the track. So it might be raining towards the start finish straight, but the rain has sort of passed over the entire circuit now. And it's going to be to the point now where the intermediate is going to start coming back into uh, their rain to start going a little bit quicker. Honda there, massive understeer on the way in. Big slide as the rear tyres did not grip. And you can see from the weather radar there as Genesis and Mercedes now side by side. Will Genesis get by? They do up into P7. They're using the most of the mistake from the Mercedes, Nissan and uh, McLaren side by side as well. McLaren getting kind of bullied out to the outside there. Nissan will go through up into P10. Uh, yeah, but you're seeing now, Tom, that rain is gone. No more schedule from what I can see on the radar there. So the track is beginning to, well, will begin to dry out. We saw, of course, down the spoon curve, it was drying out a little bit uh, more than other parts of the track. It's still ferociously wet, though, as oh, full well, Tokyo how? Drift style there from uh, Valerio Gallo. He manages to keep that NSX facing in the right direction, but this is now the wettest part of the track, effectively. It will get drier, but it's going to get drier less quickly than other parts of the circuit. So those intermediate tyres are still very, very tricky in this first sector of the lap. I am absolutely loving this race. I'm loving how much it is evolving and changing and challenging these drivers and teams to think about different strategies, think about different ways of attacking this circuit. And the thing is, if it does dry out, is it going to stay dry? Will we see more weather coming in? There's every opportunity. You've seen one rain cloud come through. Could we see another? 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure our drivers are hoping, no, please, that's enough. I'm happy now. Uh, something worth mentioning, by the way, I know they're not being on our screen very much, uh, but uh, Randall Hayward in the Lamborghini has slowly been taking chunks out of the Subaru. That gap when they got in was about 20, 21 seconds. It's now down to just under 14 seconds. So that gap coming down on the front. Don't forget you can predict the winner before the start of the grand final. Uh, for tomorrow, this is as well with the... Uh, uh, Nations Cup that's coming along here. You can win a million in-game in -game credits. It's easy for me to say if you get that one right. Genesis, meanwhile, versus Mercedes here going two by two as they come down through the drop and in towards the spoon curve in the middle part of the track. This is where it's now getting a little bit drier. Darker line beginning to appear. Mercedes on the inside. They've got enough grip to be able to use it and they get themselves up into uh, seventh place there. So nice driving here from Baptiste Beauvoir. You've got to have a think about BMW there as well. But Genesis, just as it goes so well, for them they pick up a one second penalty for gaining an advantage after going off track that is going to be music to the ears of bmw and for thomas labu to lay because they'll be able to get through with ease they're pushing the genesis down the straight there to whoever radar so it is still raining uh, very lightly on this part of the circuit but it's enough that the, the, the intermediate tires are displacing that water now so that's why you're seeing uh, a line appear on the track and then as we get a bit further in if the track dries out the guys are going to be having the alternative problem where the intermediate tires are getting a bit too hot and you're going to start seeing them searching for the water rather than now where they're trying to avoid it Team Subaru, meanwhile, out in front of this one. We've hardly mentioned them over the course of this, but Killian Dumont doing a superb job. His lap time last time around was about six or seven tenths of a second slower than Randall Hayward in the Lamborghini. And you wonder whether Hayward is going to continue closing the deficit to the Frenchman down. They've still got Roberto Sternberg, still got Takuma Miyazono as well in their arsenal to try and uh, see whether they can use that to elevate themselves up the order. But Killian Dumont given the fact he is one of the youngest drivers in the Manufacturers' Cup here. His driving is always superb, and I'm running out of superlatives to talk about him, to be honest with you, because whatever conditions you throw at him, whatever it seems to be, he just delivers and doesn't seem to crack under pressure at all. Yeah, definitely, of course, very well set up by Takumi Miyazono at the start of the race on that medium compound tyre. Really made the most of not being involved in that uh, big scramble and pulled a gap. Here is Randall Hayward driving really well as Randall today, I must say. It's a very good performance for him and you can see, doing what we mentioned, just trying to dip in now to find a little bit of water to cool those intermediate compound uh, tyres down. So what tends to happen is when the intermediates get hot, they just tear themselves apart and then you've got no grip anywhere so now it's gonna be a matter of how long can this intermediate last will it last to the end of the race i don't think so porsche esports challenge by the way in the usa is going to be taking place between the 29th and the 30th of september uh, you can get yourselves involved in that if you're based over stateside fantastic opportunities uh, that we're providing you with here at Gran Turismo if I do say so myself Genesis there with that one second penalty that they're going to be serving They've, they're still sitting behind Mercedes at the moment they will drop uh, into the wheel tracks here of BMW and also Nissan are going to be ready to pick their pocket too so Genesis here with the one second penalty as they come through into the penalty serving zone there now BMW go through and I wonder whether Nissan are going to be close enough no not quite so uh, so in fact, yes, indeed they are, because Genesis now dropping down into 10th uh, place. So there we go. Uh, that has changed hands for them. Mercedes, meanwhile, now losing out here to BMW. On the attack is Thomas Laboutelet on Baptiste Beauvoir. Had a look down into the Casio triangle on the outside, but thought the direction was the better part of Valor on this occasion. It is insane to me that we have a, a race this close after this much of the race. Reminder, our little QR code there. Give that little scan for more information about the drivers and the cars who are putting on this awesome show for us today as we go down onto lap 21 now of 35. Down towards T1, one, two, three, four cars. And then in the foreground there, Team AMG getting it all wrong, going the long way around. You can see now, Tom, the sun's out down this part of the circuit. Hey, for the optimist, you'd be down there with your beach towel and your, and your <laughs> sun cream, wouldn't you, at this point? Oh, you there, mate. <laughs> so BMW uh, just at the head of that group. Let's see if we can piece together what happened here. This is going to be what Genesis picked up a penalty for. Ah, they went into the back of Mercedes by the looks of things. Yeah, oh, they went the outside. Yeah, they went the outside, gave the advantage, didn't they? Of course, that's what the penalty was for. And yes, yeah, set themselves up for a move into the chicane. So. Yeah, Genesis there being slapped on the wrist by the stewards, handed that one second penalty. The upshot is it's dropped them down back into ninth place now as they manage to elevate themselves out. Oh, the sun definitely is out. The weather looking like it's 
hopefully for the drivers, going to stay sunny for the foreseeable future. The track is going to dry out, the lap time's getting faster. A couple of laps ago we were in 2.21, 2.22 territory. We're down now into 2.15, some in the 2.14s. Yes, yeah, so now it's about trying to keep this in intermediate alive for as long as possible. So um, the dry line is the place to be, definitely. You want to try and be there as much as you can now as the track is starting to dry back out again. Um, but the, the problem is, of course, now every time you're on that dry, uh, that dry line, you're going to be scrubbing that intermediate compound tyre. The tread on the tyre is going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. And you're going to have to deal with that as the race goes on. So you're probably going to see some of the cars now dart to the side, try and find those shiny patches, the wet patches on the circuit, uh, to try and keep some, uh, some temperature out of that tyre, to try and cool it down somewhat. The dry line definitely begins to look a little bit more prominent. No further action between Merck and, AMG, uh, and the BMW, I should say, uh, for colliding with one another. And that dry line is going to get a lot more prominent. You wonder where the crossover point is going to come. If driver's going to go on to the uh, dry compound of tyre, and who is going to be the first of them to blink? They must change the driver when they come into the pit lane, just to remind you as well. So it will give some of the other competitors an opportunity to get themselves out on track, potentially for the first time, depending on the way that the teams are going to be running things as it stands. Meanwhile, Subaru, 12 seconds is the gap between themselves and Lamborghini. Last time around they were separated by just a couple of tenths in terms of their lap time, but I'm super impressed with Randall Hayward. His pace in these wet conditions has been nothing short of superb. He's closed that gap down by nearly eight, nine seconds effectively over the race leaders in his stint. But you can see now that the track's drying out. It's starting to come back to the Subaru now. The gaps aren't, and the chunks of time being taken out aren't as much. Only a couple of attempts in that last lap where we were seeing a second, second and a half in the, in the heavy, wet conditions. So a uh, good, uh, good charge there by Randall Hayward, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, the majority of the drivers now in the two minute 10 range. So the track is definitely getting faster. Seconds of lap, it seems, uh, faster per lap as the, uh, the, the cars go around and get rid of that, uh, that wet, uh, uh, the wet surface. So how long now is it going to be before we see people go into the dry compound of tyre? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? When do you decide the optimal moment is to blink? I imagine some of these drivers are going to be thinking about it. Maybe not this lap, you possibly see it, the next lap, but look at it. Yeah, it's just, there's no standing water at all now at the hairpin. This is where the track was wettest, earliest in the race. And now, look, it's almost bone dry. Those uh, intermediate tyres are going to be getting pretty overheated now and they're obviously going to be out of their useful working range. So, uh, yeah, I'm certain that we're going to see somebody coming in at the end of this lap. Someone's going to have to roll the dice. I think this, the, if you if you manage to pit now and maybe you're a bit off the pace, there is a chance for you to come back here. But the thing is, it is still wet in some parts of the circuit. So if you go onto a, a curb or something, you are going to be in trouble. You're going to have a big moment. But uh, we'll go back to our leader now into the 209. Team Radio for AMG. I just don't want to race anymore. Well... He's happy. Race is over, mate. Take your bag and go back to the hotel. Well, that's a, that's a very defeated uh, Baptiste Beauvoir there. But you know what? You know what I say? It's not over till it's over. Anything can happen at this point. And now we're seeing the first of the, uh, the takers for the slick compound attire. Uh, Honda going on to that medium compound as are AMG. They, may, they might as well as uh, uh, race is over, apparently. Although I don't believe that mentality at all, I think. Well, I think that there's a good opportunity for some teams to try and take profit of these conditions. Valerio Gallo out of the Honda. They'll change their drivers and move over to another one. And Mercedes, as you said, also rolling the dice. I think it's probably a good thing for Baptiste Bavar. Sounding quite dejected when we heard him on the team radio. Lucas Brunelli, the Brazilian, will take over at the helm of that car. Oh, oh and a three-second penalty for a pit lane infringement as well. Oh, it never rains, but it pours, unfortunately, in Mercedes-AMG. It's going, going from bad <laughs> to worse, isn't it? So you see there, uh, Subaru just tipping one wheel into the uh, into the, the wet weather there, or the sort of whatever the rain, the water, the circuit. Try and cool down that inter, but uh, at this point, I'm very, very curious to see what Gallo can do on that uh, medium compound tyre. We'll watch the sectors, give you guys, we'll keep you updated as we know uh, whether it's quick or not, but uh, you have to do it, I think. If you're that far down, you've got no choice, you've got to roll the dice. It's the crossover point, and surely we're going to see someone coming in, but Subaru carry on. Okay. So Killian Drummond decides not to. He's happy with the conditions out there on track at the moment on those intermediate tyres. What about Lamborghini Mistake. and Randall Hayward? They're going to do the same, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. They just decide to continue on. The thing is, they have got a lot more to risk in these conditions. What they should be doing is waiting to see what the sort of lap times that come in 
for the dry shop runners is because once they've got that information they can say oh okay right now we're at the crossover point the lap times are about the same it's going to get drier we know that it's not so much of a big risk if they went onto the dry tires now and they didn't have the data available to them that it's going to be okay and they could lose so much they could be out of a podium i think i disagree with that tom because uh, they've got a massive gap behind them they've got like 19 seconds behind them and they've got 19 seconds or 12 seconds in front of them if they go onto the meet the sick a little bit too early they might be a little bit slow at the start but if they're not they're going to gain some very very crucial time back so if i was lambo and i wanted to win this race i would have pitted last lap but as you say they've never really done very well at these events so a podium would be amazing for them so i'm sure that's in the back of their head as well absolutely let's see who else is going into the pit lane then so nissan genesis and renault all going on to the medium compound of tires some of course started on the hard tire they haven't run the mediums they must still run uh, both compounds here in this race some already have done that before this one so let's see how this is going to work out and crucially what the lap times are going to be for the uh, medium shod runners as it stands for now so last time around gallo where he was on the medium tires and he did a 212.5 subaru 27.9 Right, OK, so it's not quite at the optimum range for those dry tyres. It stands and Honda off there as well. Oh, so man. Gallo, unfortunately, finding that there isn't still a lot of grip at the first corner, and he's now down out of the contention for the top five positions in this race as they lose out to Nissan and Genesis. See, you were right, Tom, actually. You were in a very rare occurrence. Tom Brooks was right <laughs> about, uh, about whoever there. So, uh, but yeah, I think um, you're seeing that. Well, we're going to see a replay of that, I think, now coming down towards T1. Let's see what happens. They, ju oh, they just the get off into the wet stuff there, and off they go. Yep, straight to the scene of the accident there for Team Honda. Absolutely nothing they can do. As you said earlier on, they're a passenger because there's no tread to clear those tyres. Oh, and, and Valerio knows it as well. It's like, oh, you know, well, here we go. But uh, you know what? I, I admire the I admire the, the, the balls to go for the choice there. So uh, Subaru into the pits. So our race leader into the pits onto the hard compound of tyre. They think now is the time to swap over. And I'm inclined to agree. And they're going to go to the end of the race here on this one, surely on the hard compound of tyre. Let's have a look at their tyres. They ran mediums. They ran intermediates. They're now on the hards. Roberto Sternberg now, the Brazilian driver, uh, who is uh, behind the wheel of that Subaru. And what is he going to be able to do? 12 seconds was the advantage there and thereabouts before they came into the pit lane here. You know, importantly, I was noticing that, that that pit lane exit is still soaking wet and they're on slick tyres, so you're seeing the, the, the guys absolutely crawl out of the pit exit just trying to make sure they don't loop the car and put it in the wall. Uh, yeah, our burger style. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> old people are going to remember that. We're, we're very old here in the DT booth. But they see, you, see the, yourself. <laughs> you can see the water being kicked up by the slicks. As soon as you get onto that other uh, surface, the tyres the, the start biting into the tarmac and you can get back up to speed again. But the margin for error is minimal here. Lamborghini still out on uh, I, I, they must have pitted by now. This is, they've gone a bit too long on this tyre, I think. And uh, uh, the, the tyre's 207 there for that. But Kobe Ashley on the intermediate 206 is as well. To be fair, I've not seen a sick runner go faster than that. Sector 2 is dry, but you have to be careful to not touch any curbs. There you go. And, and that's the thing, isn't it? Like you said, it's okay. such a narrow line. I, mean, I know it looks wide, but when you're travelling at a couple of hundred kilometers an hour and you just dip a wheel on the outside there if you've got no tread on your tires and you can't clear that water as we saw with Valerio Gallo you're heading straight into the wall that's on the inches there you can see there he's really struggling to have that grip he's sliding around some of these corners now he has gapped uh, Subaru a little bit there as those slick tires get up a temperature but he's now hunting for the wet parts of the circuit desperately trying to keep those tires uh, cool and through these sections you can see a big slide there that the tires just the, the car is producing so much aero that the tyres now just can't deal with it. Uh, it's going to have to think about coming in very soon. I think that maybe that radio is indicative that they is going to come in, just sort of trying to say, hey, listen, here's where it's uh, where there it's, go. Yeah, he comes to pits now. So uh, I think just give him some info to his teammate there. Yeah, I think that's important. So Lamborghini then into the pits, out of the car goes Randall Hayward, an amazing middle sit for him. It's going to be Subaru that will take over at the front of this one. But what is the gap going to be actually between Lamborghini and Subaru? It's about 12, 11 seconds or so there and thereabouts between them uh, before they came into the pit lane. And as they change over onto the medium compound of tyre and change drivers crucially here as well as uh, Kodaka, now the Japanese driver behind the wheel. Is it going to sit at about the same sort of gap? Our Lamborghini oh. going to have lost out. Look at him lighting up those rear tyres on the exit. That's where the standing water is. And he's just going to have to be so ginger through those first couple of corners as he now exits the pit lane. 13.4 seconds. So if anything, the gap's increased slightly. 
Such an impressive wet model, this for Tarmac. You have to take so much into consideration here. And, uh, you know, you, you'd be forgiven to think maybe it's not even the sim title. It's so close to how it is in real life here. Amazing to see it implemented so well in Grand Trismo 7. So, Kobe Ashi out of the car. Cocaine Lopez, of course, our Nations Cup champ from last year uh, in the car now for Team Toyota. Quite a way back. So, our gaps and how it stands right now of 26 laps down and nine to go. Subaru first, Lamborghini second, Porsche third, Toyota fourth. Nissan in fifth and Genesis rounding out the top six. Quite big gaps between uh, the first few cars, but I don't think that's going to uh, matter so much. We're going to see now the drivers who are more comfortable in these conditions. These are tricky conditions right now. These are not easy. And Nissan, after what's been a very up and down race, find themselves still in contention, middle of the field. Yeah, Nissan started this one in fifth place. They sit in fifth place, but as you said, they've been about every single position so far uh, here in this one, shy of the podium at the moment. Right, now I want to look at this because Subaru have gone onto the hard compound of time right at the end of this one. The lap difference between them, uh, you're going to say it's about a second or so, right? The Lamborghini are on the medium tyre, they're on the faster tyre. There's nine laps now remaining. If the rain doesn't come in, which we're not expecting it to, they're going to be going to the end on these compound of tyres. Could we see Subaru coming under a bit of pressure from Lamborghini if they have the pace underneath them before this race reaches its conclusion? It is a possibility, definitely. You're seeing from our, from our timing, we can see that some drivers have fired the tyres up into the 201s, which is not too far off the fastest lap. McLaren wide there in the background. Uh, uh, Renault and Mercedes making their way through. So McLaren's had a bit of a... Uh, dog of a race to be honest it started well and then didn't go very well after that but as i was saying getting these tires fired up quickly is so important and uh, when you do make a mistake and run onto that wet part of the circuit you lose all temperature and you have to start the process again so it's all about making sure you are millimetrically perfect at this part of the course i mean that curb on the right there lethal and the, the, they are flirting with danger every time they touch it. The dry line is beginning to increase, though. Look at this pace difference between Mercedes and Renault. Lucas Benelli behind the wheel of that Merc. We saw it ejected uh, Baptiste Beauvoir a few moments ago, just stepping out of that car, and now it's down to Benelli to try and upset the apple cart. The thing is, though, look, he's going to try and go for the move here on the outside in towards the Casio Triangle, but he's got to be so careful. It's, it's slightly dry, though, if anything, at that part of the track. It's not too wet, but there's still a fair bit of standing water on those curves. And that's the thing, if you go for that move, you've got different levels of grip at different parts of the circuit. So even if you may have the speed on your rival in front of you, doesn't mean you're going to be able to get someone up the inside because you might not have the grip when you get to that part of the track. That, that is the worst thing here. That there's, if you go onto that darker part of, of, of the circuit, you're going to just slide off. So uh, the, the circuit, in theory, becomes only about as wide as that lighter part there, and you can't find a way by. Uh, just be noticing lap times, just trying to get an idea where everyone's sitting right now. Sternberg is struggling on that hard compound of tyre. He was some four seconds slower than the Nissan of Ryota Kokobun, who's currently in fifth position. So we are seeing now uh, the uh, people in the medium tyres having a much easier job of getting that temperature in the tyre. That hard compound takes a lot longer to warm up, and you're seeing that now. So Sternberg needs to get a move on, though, because if he doesn't get that warmed up soon, he's going to have Lamborghini approaching quickly, and Mercedes lunging up the inside there, and Adegna, what a move there, managing to do that under the brakes into a corner that, that isn't traditionally a part in place with uh, with wet uh, wet surface either side of him. What a move! Blinded from Benelli, that was absolutely superb driving for him. It now leaves Artemoso under pressure uh, from the McLaren. Behind the wheel of the McLaren is Donovan Parker. Behind them is the Mazda of Paul Euro. I was talking to Paul actually before we came on air, and he's 18, young Spanish driver qualified for this last year but wasn't actually old enough to compete so it's his first event i said about the Mazda, what was it like he said in the wet fantastic loads of grip in the dry we're nowhere basically that's the problem so though they've got a, a particularly fast car in a straight line they just don't have the pace in these conditions at the moment to take advantage they haven't been a little bit in the wars though i think it's fair to say as well Meanwhile, up the road, Nissan versus Genesis. This is the battle for the final place in the top five. Genesis closing up onto the back of the Nissan team. Are they going to try and launch an attack as they sit in the slipstream? Nico Romero behind the wheel of that car. He goes to the outside line here, down towards the first corner. Surely he's not going to make this one stick. And indeed he doesn't. That was going to be heart-in-mouth stuff there for Genesis and Nico Romero. And eventually he decides to concede and sits back himself into uh, sixth place. Yeah, definitely got to be careful doing that down towards T1 because you can still see, uh, as we mentioned before, the darker patches. Touch one of those near a passenger. So um, good driving from uh, both teams there. And this time we're on board with Team Genesis. You can see the inputs there 
from uh, Romero in the bottom right hand side of the corner and what gear he's in how fast he's going uh, such an awesome part here and a great exit out of the Dunlop but nowhere to go nowhere to send it so he's still stuck there for now uh, remaining in P6 but to be fair after this the next car on the road is some five seconds ahead so if uh, Nico Romero wants to try and uh, catch Team Toach he's got to get a move done very quickly so then, down in towards the hairpin we go, the 180 degree corner. Cockerburn we ride on board with for Team Nissan. Doing a good job for the uh, Japanese manufacturer, sitting there quite nicely. We're used to seeing Cockerburn, of course, in the Nations Cup, and I'm sure we'll be seeing lots of drivers fighting oh, for that position. Oh, Lance Stroll moment. Sure. Oh, well, there, there's Romero. Yeah, okay, great. Jesus Christ. Come on, 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 come on. Yep, that's uh, Nico Romero with a bit of team radio. And let's see if the positions have changed. No, <laughs> Between Nissan and Genesis. Well, thankfully, at least we didn't miss out on too much. But I was, uh, yeah, I, I know exactly what you were thinking. You just decided to say it aloud. Anyway, in towards 130R we go here. Nissan and Genesis toe to toe with one another. Romero soaking up that pressure like a, or putting that pressure onto Cockerman and Cockerman soaking it up like a sponge at the moment plateaued really between Subaru and Lamborghini in terms of the gap between them. 13.4 seconds it's stuck at pretty much now. Porsche though rocketing up to the back of Lamborghini for P2 so we'll keep an eye on that. Meanwhile Genesis and Nissan again down towards T1. Our two cars in the fit there. Genesis finally getting the move done there on Kokoba. Nice move, nice and clean using the uh, all the circuit and up to P5 goes Genesis. So now my eyes go towards P2 and P3 because the last couple of laps Jose Serrano has been about two seconds faster than uh, uh, Kodaka in the Lamborghini so we might see a change for P2 very soon the gap now down to a less than one second for P2 this is going to be hugely exciting for Porsche to try and launch an attack oh Nico Romero cool as a cucumber for the young Spaniard Beautiful bit of driving for him around the outside at the first corner, reminiscent of Raikkonen and Fisichella in the F1 here back in 2005. But here is Porsche then, now all over the back of that Lamborghini, or closing up to the back of that Lamborghini. If they're going to strike, surely you would imagine it is going to be uh, down this back straight. And look at the amount of grip they've got. They've taken over half a second out of them on this lap alone. Yeah, now this might already be a pass down in the back straight. Lamborghini struggling to get out of the spoon curve. Porsche in the draft. He'll move on to the wet part of a circuit to try and make the move. They're going to be side by side, and I think cleverly there, Serrano thinks, no, I'm not going to try it here, there's no point, there's not enough room, I'm going to go flying off the Lamborghini, looks like it's really on the ragged edge in the dry, and we did hear the Lambo not quite as quick in the dry as it is in the wet, and now I think just trying to hold on for dear life for a podium position, but that Porsche undeniably is a quicker car right now. It's the traction out the corners where Porsche is really gaining, and indeed stability on the brakes, he's now got the slipstream advantage here at Jose Serrano, so it's Lamborghini versus Porsche, it's side by side down the start, finish straight, the inside line is what Porsche has and second position is what they have as well so Porsche are moving themselves through and up a place on the podium now there is a chance here Sternberg currently is four seconds a lap slower than Jose Serrano in the Porsche there's five laps left he could catch up before the end of the race we might have a grandstand finish here for the Manufacturers Cup at Suzuka uh, if Jose Serrano can keep this pace up there is every chance he can catch Team Subaru you've got a feel for the likes of Takiba Biazono and Killian Drummond because they really sort of put the groundwork in here but for whatever reason Sternberg seems to be struggling whether he made a mistake on that last lap we didn't see it but either way he has dropped back and he just doesn't seem to have the pace underneath him he's not comfortable with the car you can see a visual difference there in terms of the lap times as well three seconds three seconds four seconds over three consecutive laps here Porsche are on the attack and ready to try and pounce if they get an opportunity that was a gap there you saw that and uh, here is someone else reaction there on. Ross, he says I think he knows he's got a chance here. The thing is, these guys are all super, super keyed into this race. They're going to know they've got the time. What's the reaction there from the Lambo driver? I think just, you know what? OK, have it. Just let, just let me have a podium. But uh, already, that gap down to below nine seconds. Jose Serrano is on an absolute charge right now. And I'm sure being wheeled on by his team, they're telling him, mate, you are taking chunks out of the car in front. And that's the best thing you can hear as a driver. All it does is make you try harder. You focus more. The car feels like it's on rails you get into the zone and the gap is now 8.5 seconds now Sternberg he's having the opposite experience he's going to be being told by his team listen mate 
Porsche, they're catching quickly. You've got to get on with it. And uh, it's looking like he just quite, doesn't quite have an answer. His lap time this time by, we'll get it for you, is a 204.2. Porsche with an overtake. Their lap time coming across the start finish line is a two minute flat. Another four seconds out for Team Porsche. It's only going to be two laps at this rate, Tom. It's game on then, isn't it, here? Let's have a look and see what Porsche are going to be able to do. Well, there is every opportunity here for Porsche to try and take a victory. I'm trying to think of the last time they won. They won the World Tour back in Tokyo in 2019. Was that the last time that we saw Porsche on the top set over three years ago? It might be. I don't know. I mean, from our from our papers, I think it might be. But you know, we, we haven't quite got there yet. Uh, as uh, a very famous commentator once said, that catching is one thing, getting by is quite another. So. Uh, Right now, 6.7 seconds is the gap for this man, Jose Serrano, the Spaniard, one of the fastest drivers, I think it's fair to say, in the GT World Series, and now putting on an absolute show for our live audience here at the moment. The six seconds to go to catch Subaru. Don't forget about the Porsche Esports Challenge if you're liking the look of what Jose Serrano is doing behind the wheel of it. 29th to the 30th of September is taking place in the United States only. Get yourself involved in that one, and you can see Visually, this gap is closing between the two of them. Last time around in the first and second sector between Jose Serrano, he was half a second faster in the first sector. He was half a second faster in the second sector. So he's not quite as quick as Roberto Sternberg on this lap, but he's closing that deficit down. He's got four laps now to do so. If he's going to launch an attack, it is game on here for the win of this grand final between Subaru and Porsche. He's going to do it, I think, Tom. At this, at this pace, he's going to catch him. I mean, you can see just how confident he is in the car. He is launching this thing into the corners. Absolute 100% commitment, which is what you need right now. The gap now below five seconds. You could see him. You could see him. Yeah. That's the carrot dangled in front of him straight away. If you're sitting there in the cockpit, as Jose Serrano is, and you can see the driver in front, you think, well, oh, right, okay, time to get the elbows out. Time to really buckle up. And you see there, the Spanish contingent in the crowd there cheering on Jose Serrano as it's only four seconds left. That lap time, he did uh, 159 at the moment, and that's another three seconds out of Sternberg. Sternberg increasing his pace slightly, but uh, Jose Serrano with a response. This is going to come down to the wire. Four seconds now. So through in towards the first series of s bends we go. Jose Serrano driving like a man possessed. Roberto Sternberg looking uncomfortable. Last time around, lap times, Subaru 202.647. Porsche 159.5. That is incredible, the difference between the two. There's also good battles going on further down the order. You've got Nissan and Genesis half a second away from one another. You've got BMW, you've just mugged Honda for seventh place. Wherever you look here in the Manufacturers' Cup, there is action of plenty up and down the field. There he is, looking at the background, stalking his prey. Less than three seconds now. That bright green Porsche is getting closer and closer to the Subaru. And Sturbo's going to be looking at his mirrors. He's going to sit, look how much pressure he's under. He's trying to nail the front one exit. Lost another half second doing that. And you can almost start playing the Jaws theme at this point as he gets closer. Nearly two seconds now. It's going to be next lap at this point. This, could, this looks like Porsche's race. So down and towards the spoon curve we go. Pressure on for Porsche then. Pressure certainly on for Roberto Sternberg in the Subaru. That hard compound of tyre that he's got underneath him clearly does not have the same level of grip as the mediums. And the thing is for Roberto Sternberg, he's setting good pace on the hard tyres, but it's just not quite as quick as the medium shot that uh, Porsche, that, uh, uh, that uh, Serrano is driving. So there's just nothing he can do. He's just a bit, a bit of a sitting duck here at this point. And look at the gap he's taken out of him. It's down to nearly one and a half seconds. On board with Jose Serrano there, the uh, absolute figure of concentration as we go through the last chicane. We've got a couple of laps left up. This coming on to lap 33 or 35 now as we come over the start finish line. The gap is now less than a second. Jose Serrano right onto the back now of Subaru and Sternberg as we come down towards T1 for the first time. You have to now start thinking, where is he going to try and make this move. Bear in mind, there are still wet patches on the circuit. It's not completely dry everywhere. So if there's, a, if there's a mistake somewhere, this is quite easy to go the other way for Porsche. But Serrano is very experienced. He's going to know his way around the circuit and this car. Look through here. Size will be quicker. It's going to surely be, like you would imagine, into the deck. There's the hairpin. Something along the lines of that is where Porsche and Serrano are going to line this one up through the right hand. And we go. And look at the amount of grip they've got underneath him. No retaliation that Sternberg has got in that Subaru in the race 
Japanese lead and Porsche putting the pressure now onto the back of the Japanese manufacturer. Down on the brakes we go, in towards Degna 1, nice and easy through there. Degna 2 awaits them now. Keep it steady and now try and maybe launch something up the inside into the hairpin. They've got the slipstream here. Is Sternberg going to go for the defensive line into there? Yes, he does. Porsche then to the outside. Serrano trying for the long way around the outside of the hairpin for the race lead in the Manufacturers Cup. And he goes through. What a drive, what an overtake from Jose Serrano and Team Porsche. The Spaniards in front with two laps remaining. Yeah, what a move there by Jose Serrano. That is what confidence looks like. Just sent him around the outside. I think Sternberg, if anything, defended a bit too early there. Made it a little bit too easy uh, for the Porsche. But to take nothing away from Jose Serrano, that is a man possessed at the moment. And now you're going to see him just streak off into the distance there. And nothing now stands between him and Team Porsche. And a win here at the grand final of the showdown here at Amsterdam. So what an awesome event it's been so far. The race is not over yet, though. Going to come on to the penultimate lap this time by, and there are still positions up for grabs up and down the field. Great is glowing now as uh, Serrano still pushing the envelope. I have to say, it's supremely impressive, not only for the fact that uh, Sasaki and Serrano have had amazing pace, but also they've been a man down as well. Angel and as we said earlier on, out due to injury, and they've had to go uh, in a two-person formation for this one. They've kind of been a little bit on the back foot, but they've managed to make this work absolutely brilliantly and they are driving so, so well, Sasaki and Serrano, and they've got the lead of the race with a 1.7 second buffer. What, what, what a nice message that is for Angel. It's like, mate, you know, you're, you're, you're sorely missed. We're going to go win this one for you. And there they are now. Two seconds is the gap. Uh, will Subaru fall back into the Cluxus Lamborghini? I don't think so. I think they're safe for now. But uh, for, for Team Porsche, again, last time by two seconds faster than Sternberg. So uh, I think... The, 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 the thing is, Sternberg's first part of his stint was just too slow. He was doing 205s, 204s, and even in that time, Porsche was in the low two-minute uh, two range. So I think just unable to fire up those tyres in these difficult conditions. And we're seeing a reversal what we saw at the start of the race, with Subaru streaking away on medium compound and tyres. Now it has to use a hard compound. It's now suffering. You can see now we're getting to the race. The sun's starting to set here at Suzuka and on our race here at Amsterdam, the grand final of the Manufacturers Cup. So then, Mercedes, meanwhile, all over the back of Mazda here like a bad rash as they come through in towards these next series of corners. Just close behind them is Renault as well. We know Benelli is behind the wheel of that Mercedes and its damage limitation for the German mark at the moment on the back of the Japanese manufacturer in towards the Degners. The lights are glowing as the sun begins to set through Degna 2. And surely it's only a matter of time. Team Radio. Wait, Porsche goes forever. Porsche got first there, I think a bit, a bit, a bit of a surprise. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> like Porsche first, what? I mean, it's going to show the pace of Serrano, surprising everyone, even though he's not in direct competition. We've got to hand it to Benelli as well, though, trying to bring that Mercedes back after being handed it by a dejected Baptiste Beauvoir. Looking around the outside of the Mazda there, oh, a bit of contact with the rear quarter panel. And see different driving styles there, very laid back there in the bottom left-hand corner, top left-hand corner, he's on the wheel, grappling it, and they're awesome to see that there. As we come on now to the final lap, Team Porsche on their final lap now, uh, less than a lap to go, separates them and a win here. So, uh, Jose Serrano, I'm sure, just cruising around. Meanwhile, the fight still goes on between 9th and 10th. I love the deep guttural roar of this Mercedes as well. Absolutely wonderful noise as, of course, does the Mazda. A bit wide there on the apex into the Casio Triangle. That might put them under a little bit of pressure here from Lucas Benelli, but good traction out of there just thwarts the charge. We know that that Mazda can be quite fast in a straight line as well. It's got a good aerodynamic coefficient too as they come across the timing line to begin their final lap. Are they going to have anything in their locker, though, as Benelli goes for the outside line down towards the first corner? He's going to try and get the switch back here on the inside of the turn two. Oh, textbook stuff here from Lucas Benelli. Mercedes up the inside through into ninth place at the start of the final lap. That's how you do it. Yeah, amazing there. Uh, it won't be uh, much consolation for Team AMG, but it's better than finishing 10th. So uh, they'll be happy with that overtake on the last lap. Meanwhile, our leader is coming round to the spoon curve for the last time. It has been an absolute clinic by Porsche there at the end of the race. At some point, we thought they were completely out of it. They were down in P7, P8 position. But that last stint by Jose Serrano, I say that, it's still going on. Mazda there have just shoveled Mercedes off the road. I was waiting to call the winner there, but it seems the background Mercedes, oh, 
Oh dear, I think there might be some Stewart's inquiries going on for this final lap as we come through into the final series of corners. Well, Porsche were on the back foot coming into this one. One of their drivers, Angel and Estrosa, suffered an injury. They were down to two, and it was Jose Serrano and Takuma Sasaki who had to take over the mantle for Team Porsche. But they come around the final corner. Porsche have delivered here in the Manufacturers' Cup World Series showdown. They win in Suzuka in spectacular style as Team Subaru come over the line in second place to take a podium finish and Lamborghini get themselves onto the podium for the first time ever in a World Series event here in GT. Absolutely amazing. Toyota in fourth, Nissan over the line with a top five finish as well. What a spectacular race. What a drive for Team Porsche. Amazing from Sasaki and from uh, Jose Serrano as well. Just spectacular. They had the pressure on them and they performed. Take nothing away from Sasaki at all. He drove very well, but that was Jose Serrano at the end there. That is the peak pace we've come to expect from the Spanish driver. Nice hug there from his compatriot, Nico Romero, as well. And of course, uh, Will Murdoch, the Lamborghini driver. I think he's just happy to be on the podium. Look at him. He's like, what? Lambo on the podium? What's going on? But uh, what a drive there for Team Porsche. Definitely making Angela and Estrosa proud. Takuma Sasaki there as well. You can vote for your Michelin driver of the day, of the day uh, from this race. Is it Jose Serrano? Is it Takuma Miyazono? Is it Valerio Gallo? I'll tell you what, I know which way my vote would be going if I was able to cast one. Not, not that I would influence such things, of course, <laughs> as an uh, uh, impartial commentator. <laughs> But just amazing performances from all three of those drivers as well. Get yourself on to uh, your social media channels and vote for your Michelin driver of the day. We'll be announcing it later on. Let's have a look at some highlights then, shall we, from this race in the grand final. BMW started this one on pole position. They got nerfed to the outside of the circuit in the melee in the first couple of corners. It all concertinaed up a little bit later on as well. Honda ended up basically facing on the inside of the circuit. It was all crazy action at this point. You can see here Genesis on the inside, Honda into the doors, effectively, of Porsche. And Lamborghini were the team that started all of that. Yeah, this race was insane. From start to finish, in the drive to Genesis, sending it from uh, several counties back. Cars three, four wide at different points of the circuit. And then the rain came, and look at this. On the slick compound of tyres, Toyota and Porsche, zero grip. Just passengers at that point. And everyone tried to understand which was the best tyre to be on at which point of the race. Penalties for Porsche and Toyota, which in the end didn't actually mean anything for those two, uh, for Porsche especially. But uh, all trawling round, trying to find find that right compound of time in race. Me? You yeah, absolutely. You can see a bit of confusion Jet, here Jet. for uh, Mercedes over the course of this one. Valerio Gallo, meanwhile, this was him on the inside of BMW and trying to make a move stick on the wet circuit. It did begin to dry out as the race progressed on, and we ended up with a fully dry track by the end of uh, this one. At this particular point, it was still wet, however, and the wheels were coming off the wagon for McLaren and also for Nissan here. You can see here McLaren there, well, drama for them, a race to forget in the Manufacturers' Cup for the British manufacturer. Mercedes versus Honda, this was a spectacular move from Valerio Gallo in the middle sector, going on the outside, setting himself up for the inside line into the spoon curve. Just very much felt like a race of, of two halves, the weather coming, of course, midway through, and then Mercedes getting chucked off as well, as they're trying all to, to find the best way around. Baptiste Beauvoir, who later on would say, no, I'm done with this race. He really didn't have a good time out there. Would hand over to Benelli, who would receive a free second penalty. We saw that for a couple of cars as well, crossing that pit line. Here was Gallo there, attempting to make the sick tires work early just got onto that wet stuff and uh, off he went backwards. Here was Genesis and Nissan. This fight went on for a long time. Finally, Genesis got round the outside of Nissan and made the place. Great move there by Genesis. Yeah, absolutely. Nico Romero there, very proud of that overtake. Porsche, meanwhile, onto the back of Lamborghini. This was in their ascension through the field in the closing stages. They got the better of the Italian manufacturer down in towards the first corner. And such was their pace. You wondered whether they might be able to launch a challenge onto the back of Subaru before the end. At points, Jose Serrano was some four seconds a lap faster than Team Subaru. He was able to get himself onto the back in contention for the race lead. Sternberg defended the inside line coming down in towards the hairpin bend, but it was no match for Serrano and the Porsche. He went the long way around the outside. Supreme traction on the exit of the corner, and the race lead was what awaited the Spanish driver. Takuma Sasaki, Jose Serrano, winning the Manufacturers' Cup here for Team Porsche. 
in the World Series showdown. What a spectacular result for both of those drivers and an amazing result for the team as well. That one was surely for Angel Ines Rosa. There are your grand final results then on your screen. Team Porsche, the victor by six seconds from Subaru. Lamborghini, definitely worth a mention there. Their first ever podium at one of these events here. An awesome result from them. And with Team Toyota in fourth, Nissan fifth, and BMW in sixth. Meanwhile, seventh went to Honda, Genesis P8, Mazda 9, Renault tenth, McLaren 11th, and Mercedes AMG with a big race to forget there down in 12th position. But what a final stint that was for Jose Serrano, securing that win for Team Porsche. Yeah, absolutely amazing stuff from uh, Jose Serrano and from Team yeah, Porsche. Well, well, Many well, congratulations well, well, to them well, well, for what was a, a hugely well-deserved victory, that one there, Jimmy. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, obviously it's a team game here as well, but Jose Serrano really was the anchor of that one, brought that car home incredibly well. Uh, you do feel a little bit for the likes of Mercedes, you know, it's a very strong team there. It just didn't quite work out for them this time, but it just goes to show that these races, they're long races, anything can happen. And it's not all one and the first stint. Absolutely, and there are also really good performances individually from drivers as well. We saw, of course, Driver of the Day awards uh, being offered there to the likes of Takuma Miyazono. He put, put in an incredible first stint in that Subaru, but unfortunately, it just wasn't meant to be for them for the top step this time. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Miyazono is really good at just putting in those fast laps. And I think the mistake for them was that strategy. Obviously, obviously, no one knew that it was going to rain like that at the end of the race, but those hard combined tyres, they just didn't come up to temperature at the end. You saw how much Sternberg struggled. And even when they were finally up to temperature, the paces wasn't there. It was a sitting duck, and that's why they didn't win this race. If you were to cast your driver of the day, who would it be, Jimmy Broadbent? Um, it would actually probably be Randall Hayward in the Lambo in the wet. That was, was a very good middle stint. He was so good in the wet. He, he caught up with Killian Drummond, of course, who is a, a vastly decorated driver here in the, the Grand Trismo Sphere. And um, just incredibly fast. He took, I think, eight, nine seconds out of a Subaru, that middle stint. Yeah. Bit, went under the radar a bit, but definitely a very good drive from him. It was absolutely superb. Really, really impressive performance from uh, all of our drivers here. And many congratulations to those who got themselves onto the podium. Of course, the action's not done here, though, this weekend. We've still got the Nations Cup to the side tomorrow. <laughs> you have to start propping me up soon, I think. So. <laughs> Get too old for this. <laughs> yeah, all, yeah, if we have excitement like that tomorrow, then, you know, sign me up. I'm here again. <laughs> yeah, I'm very much looking forward to uh, seeing what's going to happen. We are going to be talking to our winning team with Julia in just a, a couple of moments' time. Let's have a chat then, shall we, as we now go down to Julia, who is with the winning team of Team Porsche. Well, 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 look who I have. Congratulations, guys. Big round of applause. Come on, what a man down and you smashed it. So talk us through your strategy. Obviously, you have a strategy before you race. How, how, how much did you stick to it during the race? Because that was a spicy race. Sí, la verdad que la estrategia ha sido poco lotería porque la lluvia parecía que venía, pero asomaba la cabecita un poco, pero no, no venía del todo y nos hemos jugado a entrar en el primer steam y no ha salido bien. Luego en el segundo también nos ha salido bastante bien y luego ya hemos rematado la, la faena en, en el último steam. It's, I mean, I think as Manufacture Series races go, this was, this was a, 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 a spicy one. Did it, did it feel hectic when you were racing it? Yeah, I, I think it was one of the roughest and <laughs> funnest races I've ever, I've ever right? driven. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> it was so good. Well, it was um, an amazing race to watch. I think, you know, you did, uh, you did so well. Uh, do you have a, a message for Engel, who's watching from home? Yeah? Si tienes un mensaje para el público que está en cámara ahora mismo. Sí, la verdad que quiero desear una pronta recuperación a Ángel, que tristemente está en casa recuperándose de su lesión. Y nada, esta victoria va para ti, Angelito. Ok, this victory is for Angelito, who is uh, the last guy for the team. And one final question, which is what I wanted to know was, uh, when did you know, when did you, at what point when you were racing, did you know, ok, I can take, I can take Subaru now, I, I know it, I, I can feel it, when did you know? Pues la verdad cuando he pasado a Lamborghini eh, no sabía que estaba Subaru con duro, no, 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 no había pensado, pero cuando he visto que recortaba dos segundos por vuelta he dicho, vale, lo he podido ganar. Yeah. But he said he just got, when he was uh, driving, he doesn't have uh, in his mind, he just got two seconds to figure it out, and, and that's why. 
just went for it. Just send it. I think we've all learned anything. It's just to send it. Isn't that right, Jimmy? Um, let's give us a big round of applause for our Manufacturer Series winners. <laughs> T. Portia. Back to you, Tom and Jimmy. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Jules. Great job from Team Porsche, as we said, for Takuma Sasaki and uh, also from Jose Serrano as well. A lovely little message there for Angel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always nice to say dearly missed here at the event. So looking forward to seeing him back again. But of, of course, yeah, I mean, complete well uh, deserved for these guys. I mean, we, we know how quick uh, Serrano has been uh, in nations and in manufacturers as well. Sasaki, of course, been very, very fast as well. So um, it, it was a, one of those races where it just felt all up in the air. And I think, as we mentioned, sort of when we were talking at the start of the show, that that last stint where things sort of become clear is when the race starts to really come alive and it was great to sort of watch that unfold here from the desk. I think that's the thing isn't it, as well is there was action all race. You know, <laughs> we started it and it was chaos for the first five or ten laps. Then the rain came down and it didn't get any easier because drivers were going into the pit lane. Some decided to stay on dry tyres. We saw some going off into the centre of Tokyo at particular points where they couldn't keep the car on the track. Then it dried out and you have to think of a different strategy and different drivers and who's strongest where. There were so many twists and turns in that one. That's why endurance racing is so good. You never know what you're going to get, especially with this dynamic weather as well. It's such an uh, awesome addition to these uh, World Series races. I'm so glad we have it. And uh, uh, I think here as well as in many races, it's, it's going to really uh, add to the action and obviously really test the strategy of our team as well. Yeah, and don't forget, of course, you can vote for your Michelin Driver of the Day over the course of uh, this weekend. As well, sorry, of, of today as well, I should say, uh, for the Manufacturers' Cup here tonight. Who is your mission driver of the day? Who do you think performed the best out there on the circuit? Because there were some absolute star performances over the course of that one. The likes of Randall Hayward in the Lamborghini in his middle stint of the race. Takuma Miyazono in the Subaru in the early stages where he was just able to clear off and put out such a buffer over the rest of the field. What about Valerio Gallo in the mix there as well? Could you count him out? I mean, he had the best drift, I guess. <laughs> he, they, he, he was uh, really impressive in the middle, didn't try and get the heat into the tyres, but I think just fell away a bit at the end there. Not to influence your choice, of course, at home. You, you <laughs> vote for who you, who you want. Absolutely, and of course, we've got a load of campaigns uh, going for the GT7 game at the moment as well. So don't forget yourself to get yourself involved in those. Anyway, it is now time for the podium ceremony here for the Manufacturers' Cup in the GT World Series Showdown. So then, it's been an absolutely spectacular weekend's worth of action here in Amsterdam for the GT World Series Showdown. And now we welcome on the drivers who finished this weekend, this race in third place for Team Lamborghini. Will Murdoch, Randall Hayward and Yuki Kadaka. Great performance from all three drivers. It's third place for them at the chequered flag in the Manufacturers' Cup. the plaudits of the crowd here in Amsterdam. Now we move over to second place. A great drive for Team Subaru. Please give it up for Takuma Miyazono, Roberto Sternberg and Kylian Drumont. And now the winners of the Manufacturers' Cup here in Amsterdam. Despite being one driver down, they pulled it out of the bag. Takuma Sasaki and Jose Serrano for Team Porsche are the winners of the Manufacturers' Cup in the World Series showdown here in Amsterdam. And now time then for the national anthem of our winning team, the German national anthem of Team Porsche.
A huge congratulations to our top three finishers here in Amsterdam for the World Series showdown in the Manufacturers' Cup. Now time for the third place trophy to be presented. And it is presented by the gaming manager for Michelin, Jeffrey Marseille. And it goes to Team Lamborghini. performance from Robbie Heck, Will Murdoch and Randall Hayward. Now time for the second place trophy to be presented by Gran Turismo Series producer Casadori Yamauchi. And it is, of course, awarded to Team Subaru. Amazing job from Takuma Miyazono, Robbie Sternberg and Killian Drumont. And now time for the winning trophy to be presented by former GT Academy winner and the man who the biopic Gran Turismo movie is based on, Jan Mardenborough. And it is presented to Team Porsche! Amazing job from the Porsche team, Jose Serrano and Takuma Sasaki. And of course, not forgetting what Angel Estrosa has been able to bring to that team as well. Despite not being able to be here in person, we wish him all the very best. We know that we're thinking of him. And of course, that victory was definitely for Angel for Team Porsche. What an amazing Manufacturers Cup we've had here for the World Series Showdown. Once again, a round of applause for Team Lamborghini, for Team Subaru and Team Porsche here in Amsterdam. Wow, wow. I know we're always impressed by the driving, but I, th did this seem like a particularly spicy special manufacturer series? I mean, there's spicy and then there's hot sriracha sauce. This was dripping all over it. What a race! Yeah, oh, you a, cannot uh, laugh I'm at not, the things I'm not, I'm I say. I'm not sure where to go with that, Jules. <laughs> well, you knew what I meant, and that was the well, point of language, that, Tom. Okay. <laughs> What did you think? That was pretty good. I really enjoyed that. It was a mad race, you know, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's the old saying, and the cars aren't real, but the racing certainly is. Uh, That's some of the best racing that I've seen for quite some time. It was there, so there hectic. Was, what was happening? There, there was never a lap where there wasn't an overtake or something incredible happening. It's uh, one of those races, I think, that go down in GT history, one of the most more eventful ones, I think. I think definitely. Do you like a bit of hot sriracha on your racing, then? <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if it's <laughs> exactly that same manner. But, yeah, amazing, amazing performances from, from everybody. You know, 12, 12 different teams, 36 drivers taken to the field different weather conditions, action in the first part of the race, wet conditions to dry conditions. You couldn't it had script everything. it. You, you couldn't script it. And, and, and that's the thing, is it's such an amazing display of skill that the drivers who were up the sharp end at the start of the race were the drivers that were up the sharp end at the end of the race. I mean, it had basically everything, like in our little wish list. I think. We should have to do some, like, some GT bingo next time and see if we can tick them all off. <laughs> um, now, before we go, and there's still so much to talk about, but we can exclusively announce where our world finals are gonna be and it is beautiful barcelona yeah december 1st to the 3rd we are very excited to be going there you guys should just come along and watch it in the, come in the crack it's gonna be great i bet there's gonna be more sriracha <laughs> racing sauce well, definitely i used to live in barcelona and it is just the most amazing city that you yeah. could wish to imagine so much history amazing architecture just one of I'm, I can't tell you how excited I am. I he's can't get gushing. the words out. I honestly cannot That's wait to go back. That's how you can tell that he's really excited because for once in his life, it's really difficult to get some words out of his mouth. He's like, <laughs> Barcelona. Uh, it's going to be great. We would love to see you there. So, uh, yeah, obviously keep uh, an eye on uh, Grand Turismo socials and stuff like that because that's amazing. Um, I, we, 
if this is the level of what's going on now that we have an audience back, like, what's the Nations Cup going to be like tomorrow? It's going to be ridiculous. I mean, uh, it's pretty noisy of the day already. I mean, mm. we have these very nice headsets here, and usually they're pretty good at getting rid of the audio. <laughs> but today, no chance. It was mad. And then we are, I, there is a, a bigger crowd I, I hear as scheduled for tomorrow as well. So I'm uh, looking forward to that one. And the thing is for the Nations as well, different format here tomorrow yes. as well, which we're going to guide you all through, obviously. But like th that is going to be even more exciting because it's just another variable into the mix. It's going to be, yeah, I think something is, it feels like a sort of weird, it wasn't just the audience, it feels like a very weird shift in, I don't know, I don't want to talk about the ether, but you know, you know what I mean, like it just feels really, really different. Um, don't forget, of course, of course, yeah, so Nations Cup tomorrow, don't go anywhere, we've got the World Finals obviously in Barcelona, uh, don't forget to go online and get yourself a ticket, and then we've got our press conference coming up where we're going to be announcing our Michelin driver of the day, so you should be voting for that right now, guys, I don't know. I need to go to bed early or something just to like mentally prepare myself for tomorrow. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> well, look, we have absolutely loved bringing you all of this amazing racing today. And we're so happy that you've joined us. And we will see you, well, back here again tomorrow. Go right, lads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>
continue. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Chen, Chen, Chen. Getting really bad on this part of the track. Really bad. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon, or a very good evening, I should say, rather, and welcome to the GT World Series showdown here in Amsterdam. It is the Manufacturers' Cup that's took place here this evening, and we are here with our top three teams from the Manufacturers, Series, uh, well, Manufacturers Cup final event here. Team Porsche, who... Uh, managed to take the victory ahead of Team Subaru and then Team Lamborghini in third position. Uh, first of all, let's go to Team Porsche, our race victors, and go to Jose Serrano, first of all. Jose, an incredible performance. You took the chequered flag for Team Porsche. Just talk us through that performance from, uh, from your perspective and how happy you are for Team Porsche to have taken the victory. Bueno, José, eh, háblanos un poco de cómo ha ido la carrera y sobre todo eso, qué, qué, qué significa este resultado para, para Team Porsche. Bueno, al principio ha sido un poco caótica la carrera, con tanto toque, con tanto accidente, pero ya más tarde se ha ido tranquilizando un poco la cosa, hemos cogido nuestro ritmo y nada, hemos conseguido la victoria que es muy, muy importante para nosotros, para Porsche, para Angelito también que estará en casa disfrutando como nosotros, así que nada, muy contento. <risa> 
Yeah, it was a very chaotic beginning of the race. Uh, lots of fighting, lots of uh, chaos. Uh, but then the, the race started to be calm and, 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 and the race started to come to our side. And yeah, uh, this victory means a lot to, to us, to, to our team, and especially for Angel Inostroza, which is at home. And, and uh, yeah, obviously, uh, he deserves this win. And, and it, it, this win goes for him. So, so proud. Well, thank you very much indeed, Jose. Very impressive performance from uh, Team Porsche. Let's move over to Takuma Sasaki. Takuma, uh, an amazing performance from yourself as well, being a part of uh, Team Porsche's victory here. Obviously, you've been one driver down with no Angel and Estroza here. How did that cause you to adapt your strategy as a, as a team for this event? え、ま、彼が抜けたことによってチームのストラテジーどういうふうに変えましたか。そうですね。え、ま、練習の時点で、え、セラーノさんと一緒に決めてたことなんですけど、え、ま、やはりチーム戦ということになりますので、ま、え
Bom, é, nós usamos o pneu duro porque começamos com o médio, né? E o pneu duro era obrigatório a, a colocar. Então, como passamos do médio para o intermediário, colocamos, a, a única opção era colocar o pneu, o pneu duro no final. E eu tentei ser o mais cuidadoso possível para não encostar em nenhuma zebra. A pista estava muito molhada ainda, então eu fui bem cuidadoso. É, infelizmente ali não tinha o que fazer com, com o Porsche, estava muito mais rápido. Então conseguimos a P2, né, sem, sem risco, trouxe o carro para casa tranquilamente. Uh... Obviously, they had to use the hard tire compound in the end of the race because they choose to uh, start with the mediums. And um, his decision was not to make any mistakes, so he was trying to avoid the curbs as much as he could. He knew that uh, it would be difficult by the end of the race, uh, but his uh, main concern was to just bring the car home and not make any mistakes. So in the end, uh, the second place was uh, a good result overall, and he couldn't have done anything uh, better than that. Thank you very much indeed, Roberto. Round of applause for Team Subaru for their second place finish in the Manufacturers' Cup. And lastly, we move over to Team Lamborghini here. Their first podium, to the best of my knowledge, in the GT World Series in the Manufacturers' Cup. Uh, three drivers for their team, Will Murdoch, Randall Hayward and Yuki Kidaka. Will, let's start with you first of all. Uh, we were talking before the start of the race and you were sort of pensive, shall we say, about your chances going into, into the event. How do you feel now that Lamborghini have secured their first podium? Uh, well, to be, I, I don't really know how we're here, to be honest. Um, our goal for the race was to survive, and we thought that a realistic goal was a top 10. And a lot of people had issues during the race. Uh, we had our own issues during the race. Um, but we broke away from the chasing pack, the battling pack. Um, and we just stayed consistent throughout the whole race. Randall did a great job in the West End and Yuki did a great job on the mediums at the end just to keep it on the track. Um, we knew that our dry pace was not gonna be there at all. Uh, we could see that in qualifying. Um, our hard stint was very good. Uh, we just had to get our elbows out and sometimes it was a bit over the, the limit from a lot of other cars, but um, Yeah, we just decided to keep it on the track and keep it consistent throughout the whole race and somehow we're on the podium. Well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, let's move over to Randall Hayward. Randall, you were, of course, a crucial element as to why Lamborghini's on the podium. The wet conditions, though, in the middle of that race, just, just talk us through what it was like having to, to deal with a constantly adapting circuit. Honestly, I was hoping the conditions were going to get worse because that's the, the worse the conditions got, the more our car thrives on pace. Because I started to notice where we were pulling the gap on Porsche and pulling the gap or closing in on Subaru again. But unfortunately, it dried up when I was starting to get in my rhythm. But I mean, I'm happy to be here in third. Without, honestly, without Will having a great first stint and maintaining and keeping the car on track, we probably wouldn't have been here. Well, thank you very much indeed, Randall. And finally, let's move over to uh, Yuki, uh, then, who was, uh, of course, a crucial element and brought the Lamborghini home in third place. Uh, Yuki, it was always going to be really tough at the end of that race, especially with faster cars such as Porsche coming through the field. But, but how was it, from your perspective, to, to bring Lamborghini home for their first podium in the Manufacturers' Cup? あの、かなりあの、タフなレースだったと思うんですけど、あの、本当にま、ポルシェみたいな早い、早い相手が、あの、競り合っていて、あの、最、あの、自分の視点で、あの、最後まで走り切った時に、あの、その、あの、その環境
Um, I think uh, you know when we were first, first talking in the beginning, uh, we knew uh, that if uh, you know, if it if it rains, uh, the Lamborghini has a good chance of going up in the ranks. Um, and uh, in Randall's stint, I mean, he really uh, you know got us up up there. Uh, so when it came to my stint, um, you know, I really was focused on uh, keeping on the record line. Um, and you know, and on the, over the radio, they told me, you know, the Porsche is coming, but don't even worry about it. Just you know, just do what you need to do. And uh, that that really kind of took the load off, and uh, you know, let me relax and you know, take it home. Yuki, thank you very much indeed. Many congratulations to Team Lamborghini on their first podium in the Manufacturers' Cup. Well, before we take some uh, questions from the floor here, I can now announce the Michelin Driver of the Day here for the GT World Series Manufacturers Cup in Amsterdam. And it goes to Jose Serrano. And of course, a special mention as well that the Gran Turismo World Series World Finals will take place in Barcelona between the 1st and the 3rd of December. Anyway, I'd now like to open it up to some questions from the floor from our media here in Amsterdam. Hello, Tom from Traction.gg. I got a question for Randall, if that's all right, because you were driving in the rain. What is it about the uh, Lamborghini characteristics specifically that makes it better in the wet than in the dry? Um, I think we just had more traction over the um, majority of the field, and um, I tried a bunch of wet lines, and the wet lines that, that worked for my car, uh, I guess, had a bigger advantage over other cars, so I just took advantage of that and tried to stay consistent and not crash out. But honestly, my mindset was to try to make up as much time as I can on the Subaru, but like I said in the, my past answer, um, it dried up, so, but yeah. I was just trying to keep the car on the track and keep us in the top three because uh, we weren't expecting this. <laughs> Randall, thank you very much indeed. Any further questions from any of the media here in Amsterdam or any of our audience that are watching that would like to ask a question to any of the drivers who are up on stage at the moment? Nope. Okay, finally, that brings an end to the press conference then for the GT World Series showdown for the Manufacturers' Cup here in Amsterdam. Of course, we do it all again tomorrow with the Nations' Cup, and we very much look forward to your company. Once again, a huge congratulations to Team Lamborghini in third, to Team Subaru in second, and the winners of the Manufacturers' Cup for the GT World Series showdown of Team Portrait. <laughs>